So stop being embarrassing. It's, it's a fantasy. Uh, All right, here is our agenda. Um, it's not completely accurate because we've been, because we changed it. Uh, so we're going to start with Lucas. Um, for, so basically, there are going to be three 20-minute pre presentations. There's going to be Lucas, then Mo, and then Victor, and then uh, we, the chairs, are going to take over and moderate a, a more open discussion about the stuff. So I, I, we're about as ready as we're ever going to be. So um, Lucas, why don't you take it away? Wait, is there a question? A question about this. Uh, uh, this so these guys are talking about past experience in priorities, right? Uh, partly. Okay, and then I thought we had some time to talk about possible solutions. Uh, uh, like Will, I'm thinking of Will's slides here. Uh, the second half of my slides. Uh, I think there might have been a few more. Proposals. If time, time allows. I mean, so, so, so if, if you guys are, are all good in the whiteboard discussion of priority <laughs> questions, then, then, we'll, then we'll have time. If that turns into um, a quagmire, then we will have time. I think we should discuss the proposals before we have a whiteboarding set to discuss the proposals. I think I, we should reverse the order of those okay, two. Okay, so the, um, these are the, there, there was like a set of like five questions about like, just to keep in mind when we're thinking about proposal, we don't have to spend, we don't have to debate them all and spend an hour if we don't want to, but I think it does make sense to at least put them up and get them in everyone's mind before we see the proposals. But we don't have to spend a super long time on it if, if we, if people think that would be the most efficient thing to do. I think some guidance sooner. there to the room would be useful on that particular thing. I, I like the way you're talking about it, which is, that the questions should help you think about how to evaluate the proposals that are coming, because then the questions are essentially the things that the proposals are solving for. But maybe that's a way to, that's one way to do it. But we've allocated 70 minutes for that, which seems excessive, right? So if the questions are a framing minutes. exercise. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 160 minutes all in all. But yeah, that's a fair point. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do our hour of the presentations that we have, you know, that we sign up for, and then, um, and, and the, but just I want to scope those. Those are that is, those three presentations are experience, prior experience in in other priority systems. Two of them are Victor's is uh, mine is closer to the questions part. It's about how we scope the solutions, how to evaluate the solutions. I see. Okay, so I prefer it to like probably right before Collins and Wills would make most sense. Well, I think I think your presentation may color the discussion that Alan's going to lead about our questions. So maybe it's an sure, interesting if, if you feel. Yeah, I, I, I think we should keep stick with the agenda as is with, I, I mean, I think we all share the hope that we will not consume anything like 160 minutes on the chair portion. <laughs> If, if I if I may, may say like uh, uh, listening to discussions that Colin and uh, will have yesterday or some of those things on this for, for main topic, this, those are not solutions. They are uh, they are proposals which would might help ask the proper questions. Um, in the in sense, you, you might even come come down to the point that um, does these proposals address the requirements that we started in the, uh, at the very beginning in the morning. If if fifteen if we can get fifteen my, minutes. My also. my like experience with this group is that when we don't like set up basic expectations that it ends up in a quagmire pretty quickly when there's a proposal on the table. I think the questions that I uh, that I read they, they look like really good framing for a lot of discussions. And I think the solutions that everybody has, you know, uh, proposed or have straw man up, they go exactly to those questions. So I think we'll end up talking about the questions or the proposals, the same content either way. <laughs> um, okay, I, I'm inclined. Questions make sense. I just, I just sort of was trying to figure out where the other things fit on the agenda because, like, the what we don't have on the agenda is proposals, <laughs> and we're not going to get anywhere without that, right? By the way, nobody sent any emails to the chair saying I have a proposal I would like to present. May I have agenda time? So, <laughs> and no one said anything in the morning agenda back either. So, um, <laughs> totally fair comment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, my my vision is that like probably by like two thirty or three, we're looking at those things. Sound good? Okay. We're gonna aim for that. All right. Uh, now that we've used a bunch of time um, <laughs> to discuss how to allocate time, uh, Lucas, why don't you take it away? I will stop sharing so you can.
do your thing. You're muted, Lucas. Or yeah, are you still um, working on slides? Screen share is being a bit weird. Oh, so. neat. Nope. Did that work? I'm recording. Thank you. Yes. Great. OK. Um, I'll try and be brief, um, which is hard for me. So just bear with me. Uh, Alan asked me to do a review, effectively, of, of kind of where HTTP2 priorities started. Um, and where it went to and where we deviated and where we ended up and maybe to take a look at where we are now and what we learned what gaps there are what opportunities there are um mock is very different i've been watching along um not as actively involved as some people but i've got opinions and i think some of the stuff i i'll talk about here is just focus on http this isn't to say that this is a proposal uh, for mock or anything um, there are there are things that transfer, obviously, uh, but yeah, just take this as a a review of of the old stuff as potentially some motivation. Um, what I've noticed a lot is that people are talking a lot about priorities. We have a whole meeting, a whole two days dedicated to the topic, um, and in the end, uh, kind of my takeaway from talking about it a lot myself over the last few years is that it doesn't really matter. Uh, ultimately, you're gonna you're gonna do something. Your actions uh, are gonna pick how good or bad or ugly um, your implementation of whatever people said to do works. Uh, sometimes the, the specs, the RFC for extensible priorities, for example, have to add so many words, it's still not entirely clear what uh, anyone is supposed to do. Um, and to, to kind of reiterate some of the points that Christian was making um, this morning, I kind of agree that it's a lot of its best effort. We just want to do something that's better than doing nothing or doing the worst possible thing. Um, quite often, that's good enough. You know, it's this kind of exponentially difficult curve of optimization. Some use cases where you can control things a lot more, um, you can fine tune down to the nth degree and get really, really good stuff. Uh, but on the internet, across different implementations, especially for HTTP, a different diversity of various things. Um, a lot of this stuff just doesn't matter. And the hardest part is actually proving that anything works. Uh, despite your best intentions, you might implement the thing perfectly. Um, and then someone in the network is just screwing with you. Uh, and you won't know. Um, and so a big part of this is how to measure this stuff, not in a lab. How do we measure for real? I don't have the answers to that, but I want to make sure that's in the back of people's minds about whatever we maybe come up with here or define longer term. Um, how are people going to objectively measure that in four years time when you have a customer or you are a customer and you're complaining to somebody that something isn't as good as it could be by some metric um how how can you report that so that they could reproduce this problem um that's still something that plagues h2 and h3 to this day not just about priorities about in general i think it's easier for someone like alan who controls client and server um in some ways but Generally, uh, my experience is that it's it's really tricky to get this stuff right, and it only matters where there's a bottleneck. Uh, when when things are fine, you just don't notice this stuff. So it only matters when it really matters, which tends to be the the kind of the edge cases or the tail of the internet, which is difficult. Um, I'll also say that a lot of these slides are just stolen from past slideware that I've made, or Alan's made, or Ian's made over the years um, in various working working group meetings or interims. Um, this is something I presented, I think, to Mask. I don't know. But there's a lot of overlap between these groups of people. Obviously, Quick is the transport protocol, and HTTP had something to say about this stuff. But Mask, WebTrans, and Mock are driving new use cases um, and have different interruption and interaction modes, different ways of sending application data. So we're all kind of in this together. Um, and, and part of that is W3C. Uh, there's a lot of discussion over there about uh effectively avoidance of starvation so we might talk about fairness or or starvation and bandwidth share that we talked about this morning um there's a lot of cooks uh, trying to trying to come up with something we all kind of know we need to eat but what the recipe is i, I don't think we have a good handle on um and from my perspective a lot of this has all happened before yeah the specifics that are different but um maybe as you'll see some of the slides and some of the archaeology of the protocol stuff like it's happened before it'll happen again um can we can we just 
pick just good enough to keep making progress and, and actually trying to deploy some of this stuff. Because no matter what we do, for the next two years, people will still keep chipping away and coming up with uh, more and more and more edge cases that, oh, couldn't you just do this kind of thing? And the answer is yes, do that yourself. Just do it on the server. You can do whatever you like. Um, do you really need guarantees of end-to-end -end performance? Maybe, but maybe you don't. Um, so I want to like one of the key things that I learned during the process of the prioritization stuff is that the focus was a lot about the signaling, like oh we're sending these things and they're saying this and we have to do that. Um, but that the, the the key difference is the signaling isn't about the scheduling. It's important. It's an input, but the scheduling is what matters the most. And by scheduling, I mean just what to pick, what to send, in what particular order, or how to share a, a, a contained resource. Um, we've talked a lot about the bottleneck being a network, but that's not always the case. In my experience, like even within the last year, there are some characteristics of how you consume the thing that you've been sent or has been delivered to you that counts too. An example of that is like weird, but um, I was delivering things in the correct order, but just slightly delayed. Just I was accidentally sending some JavaScript just ahead of an image. <laughs> And that parsing was stealing the CPU from the image rendering and affecting a key uh, metric that the web world like to use called uh, largest contentful paint LCP. Maybe that's just a one-off, who knows? But there are other cases where um, other resources are contended for and they're, they're harder to talk about because we're so focused on the network. And that's fine, but it's, it's something I wanted to bring to this perspective. I tried to bring up on the mailing list, like how, how clients consume this data does have a bearing on. And that's part of the input into where we landed with extensible priorities is to try and signal some intent, um, get above just the basic, this thing depends on that one, or this thing is slightly more important than this one, and tell the person sending you the information, this is effectively my objective, this is what I'm trying to achieve, or here are some of the constraints about my environment, and let that server make its own choice. Um, a big part as well is is pretty obvious. Like um, it's it's quite often better to ignore any strict scheduling guidance if you have some bytes right now and you just want to send them, uh, or or you read those bytes and consume them and feed them into some pipeline. Uh, optimizations like Nagel keep coming back and biting people. Uh, this idea that you might wait slightly longer to do the perfect prioritization can can be a fallacy. Uh, get tuning that is difficult. We talked a bit about buffering into the network or transport layers. Um, there's always this kind of tension between trying to fulfill and, um, and grow a sea wind, for example, versus maybe holding back just to allow something that's slightly more important to preempt. This is one of the examples of really hard to, to tune and test and verify this stuff. It's feasible, but it's, it's quite difficult. Um, so let's go further back in time. Uh, Speedy, the precursor to HTTP2, um, the original uh, had weight-based priorities. It used an integer between zero to seven, um, blah, blah, blah. During the course of the standardization, which I was not a part of, uh, things changed from having eight levels of prioritization to having two to the 31 minus one. Um, whether that was the right choice or not, who knows? Because um, along the path, back in January 2014, so 10 years ago now, uh, there's a proposal uh, from Will Chan and uh, Co about um, using dependencies because you could have this perfectly programmable representation of exactly uh, kind of like how a, a web browser does its own web page loading and dependency trees between resources that it has. And you could express that perfectly in the, the transfer layer such that a, um, a server could, could do it. Um, yeah, like there was some mention from Martin Thompson about that, around some intermediary bug. I don't know what that is. I still don't, but I find it fun um, acting generally as an intermediary that um, these these are not bugs per se, but difficulties in deployment. It's very easy to come up with a scheme that works fine when you have a client and a server that have access to every resource they need to transfer. Gets hey, a lot uh more Lucas, I just want to say, I think I can, because it might be relevant, what I think they're talking about is that there, when you had numerical priorities, there was not really a reasonable way for uh, a proxy to merge the priorities, but the trees could be merged. 
you know, in a way that made sense. And that I believe was the motivation for going like, that was the killer argument. I wasn't there either, but that was the killer argument why they needed this tree. Yeah. That does ring some bells. Now you mention it. Um, and, and I think that's a good point, uh, whether that was the, the genesis of that idea or not. There was this whole idea that you could create sub trees of trees and manage, you know, as a proxy, you could have all of these origins with their own different views of priorities and, and merge them all and make sure everything was perfectly balanced. Um, and I think the reality of that was nobody ever implemented it. It was just way too hard. Or you could do it in theory, but again, proving all of that complexity was worth it versus just the most dumb, simple round robin um, was hard, or, or to demonstrate the value of the complexity, I think. Um, I'm, I'm he, conscious he of has time. a question. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'll total comment. I, I, I think you already know this from past conversations, but there were cases when we would turn the more complex thing on, and then like performance would get worse, and then we just turned it back off. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> the system had like evolved to like assume like whatever dumb thing we were doing before was like the right thing, and like. You know, it had like you know whatever the rest of the the system had evolved around it. So you start like implementing something this complex, and it's like I don't know. Although also also like no one could ever like every time I try to explain like the old system to the YouTube folks, like the developers, they're like I don't get it. They're like, what do I do with this? Absolutely. Like, and I think this is uh, I come onto it in in one of my slides. Um, I can skip over these. These are just showing how how the the design continued to evolve. So we went from the eight levels to the 31-bit levels to the having this thing that we adopted. I don't even know what this priority group identifier does. Doesn't matter, doesn't doesn't care because um, before we finished um, the RFC, again, we changed again. And we ended up with a dependency and a wait. Don't want to go into it. It was hard. Um, the pains were that this completely programmable thing was just too hard to explain. Um, what, what what do I do with this information? Like, the web developers don't necessarily think like protocol nerds. Some do, um, absolutely. But like, w what are they expected to do? Like, when I'm developing a website, I'm not generally controlling the priorities anyway. The, the browser is going to do a whole load of scheduling for me um, and, and kind of take away a lot of the, the hard thinking anyway. So now the browser needs to anticipate the, the type of website I'm using or the kind of workload I'm doing. Um, not only that, but on the server side, um, bubbling up what these priorities were well, is like a still not solved problem in the general sense that the API is never really caught up with this. Um, having frames, things that exist in, in kind of a hop by hop or a wire level signal are fine. Um, but how do you tell your web app written in like Perl or something that that happened? Um, they weren't used to this. They they kind of schedule or uh, handle things more on an independent request by request basis. So um, did they need to know? Not necessarily, but it could help. Um, and so that was part of the motivation for one into it. Extensible priorities was this realization that H two had all these features, but actually the the API, um, the the feedback signal to apps or the way that apps could control this stuff just never really materialized, and that it's a bit of a dead end. Um, to that end, some clients just picked a single strategy and just stuck with it. Um, some were bad. Uh, I'll show them on the next slide. Um, and the server just ignoring them was like objectively better. You could show this in some of the web performance metrics that we had. Um, again, like this stuff was hard to test. Um, I don't need to go back over that. But I'm most interested in like real user measurements, quality of experience measurements here. I'm bored with server side or synthetic benchmarks. They're good for proving your scheduler does what it's supposed to do under the, the conditions that it's designed for. Um, but it's the the weird part of the internet that does stuff like UI Fi um, doing things um, is what, what, what kind of annoys me. Um, and Ian touched on it like brittle, the brittleness and the ossification. It's, it's just too complex. Like there's just too many variables even though there's only two fields dependency and weights and we ended up with this kind of crazy melange of things uh, this is directly stolen from some slides ian gave uh, back at well, i think itf 106 yep um, as output from a uh, priorities design team that we made when we finally got around to admitting that there was a problem that we were going to come up with a solution um uh, a lot of that work um, was kind of not guided, but we had good input um, from Robin Marks and co, who were taking a look at all of the different variations of serving that you could do. Again, just focused on web, but this kind of analysis and input helped guide some of the 
or frame the discussions about what we should do, what were the complexity trade-offs, um, with some in, e examples of, well, this algorithm is kind of good enough or better, um, and it's simpler. It's simpler to, to signal, it's simpler to explain, simpler to, to verify. Um, and then taking some input from some work at, say, Cloudflare, where we, we just ignored the client signals and did our own thing based on our own kind of heuristics and understanding, um, effectively. Um, stepping into H3 and quick, uh, we did try just to pull a crossover the whole feature set of HTTP2 um, onto HTTP3 because we wanted to be feature compatible. And uh, the stream independence of Quick just made that really hard. There's a lot of good uh, history and presentations from, I think, mainly Mike as the editor of the draft, but other people like Alan, um, who who just like we kept getting into these weird edge cases like well what if you signal a dependency on this thing and it hasn't arrived yet and it was just getting um nasty i would say uh which kind of led to us saying is this really the thing we want to do uh this is ian's kind of view of the this prioritization spectrum um again i won't go over all of them but the, from the left to the right what was h2 and what was not h2 and um, what did people actually implement for real, even given the H2 spec that they had at the time? What did they kind of default to doing? Uh, in the end, we just punted priorities in the quick working group and said, you should probably do something. It's important, but we want to ship the specs, so we're, we're going to move on for now. Um, again, I'll reiterate, the, the priority signal is just one input to the scheduling. Um, signals can come from anywhere, really. Like. Maybe you have too much memory load and you just want to serve the, the really simple stuff uh, for some reason. You know, the agency is always on the, the, the a person, the user agent or the server. Trying to mandate stuff in the protocol will just always get ignored when it comes to the, the stability or resilience of, of some software. Or you're not going to be defensive enough and you're going to get owned. You're going to be naive and maybe get dosed. These kinds of things are still happening. Um, we, that I don't see them being much of the discussion here, um, but we, we, to me, we do need to be mindful that we're not going to back people into a corner where they're, they're kind of obliged to do things and that they're trivial, attackable. Um, but yes, some of the, the interesting things that you might want to consider are like the length of the object that you're delivering um, or how the process, how the receiver is going to process that thing. Uh, we have the extensible priority scheme, I'm sure of time. I'm not going to go into it. I kind of covered this. It's optimized for HTTP, but with the idea of being extendable to new HTTP apps that might come or other ways. Uh, the recap, maybe to, to kind of touch on something Mo was saying earlier, that if you have this, the, these some levels, max and min, you, you don't necessarily want to make the default either of the, the edges because that doesn't give you much room to, to grow or or wiggle room, so to speak. So the urgency levels that RFC 9218 has are eight, and the default is three. And the incremental thing that handles round robin bandwidth sharing is always off. So there's a strict linear in order uh, delivery, which maps pretty well to what a web page would need. There's a whole bunch of pages on the scheduling guidance, all recommendations, suggestions, and caveats and get outs to say, you know, don't do this because you could be starved. Uh, here's a visual example. Not going to go into it. Let's see how we did. Um, like I said, Quick didn't, didn't define any priority signaling, but pretty soon, like during the development, even before RFC, many Quick implementations picked up that model or something inspired by it. Uh, you know, various levels of serving round robin. I think that's not because the scheme was so great, but that it's kind of obvious. It's an obvious way of doing things that is not too hard to implement. To Alan's point, it, it, that, that bit's pretty trivial to write and test. Um, I say that, and um, actually, some things win. But uh, we also saw deployments in web browsers um, and various servers. Uh, Apple's low latency HLS spec adopted this as a kind of a profile and mandated even more rigorous rules. That's something uh, uh, Pantos and I discussed a bit during the standardization. He wanted the guidance on scheduling to be stricter in the spec. Um, I pushed back because because of all the reasons I have. Um, and, and ultimately, they landed on what I think is the correct one, which is saying if you really want this particular use case to do really well, 
these are the things to do because we have good uh, objective measurements of, of success for a video streaming use case that is different. And if you follow these, you'll be able to test and measure them. Um, the sending of the, the header as a signal is real easy. Um, but even validating how things work still is, is pretty tricky. I believe Robin Marks is, is working on some more studies of this. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, can some you just of the can wrap this up in the next couple of minutes, please? Sure, absolutely. Um, some of the lessons learned uh, that uh, server is just going to do what it's going to do. Like it, it always has to make decisions whether the signals are good or bad. There's a lot of stuff around merging I didn't get to touch on here. That was a big discussion, and I think something that this group's going to need to solve between the publisher and the subscriber. Um, but we touched on reprioritization, and in my experience, that's sort of really not used too much. The latency is just the killer there. It's rare that it, it helps. Maybe if you're doing big, bulky downloads and you want to be able to kind of tune them down, but I haven't seen it in practice. Uh, some new use cases emerged. Mask came along and added datagrams. So we have connections that are multiplexing TCP and UDP-based flows using streams and datagrams. Um, how to share the bandwidth appropriately between them is a bit of an open question. It resonates with the, the discussions in the web transport working group around avoidance of starvation between those two things. Again, there's no direct um, answer. For that use case in particular, there was a way to extend the extensible priority scheme that I wrote up as a proposal and it could work. For mock, I don't think that's appropriate, but maybe there's some things to share. Talk about, about a lot about send order. Um, that makes sense. Again, that's a proposal. That's something I implemented if we wanted to reuse extensible priorities. There are use cases even in HTTP land where send order could be valuable. Um, and it's kind of just sat there doing nothing. Um, but there's also use cases for inter-object priority changes I'm aware of. So having, say, deliver this X bytes of a, a resource at the highest priority, and as soon as you've hit that, drop it back down. An example is a progressive image delivery uh, that we do at Cloudflare, but there are other things I'm aware of too, such as timeliness thresholds, et cetera. Um, and there we go. Yes. Donna has a question. Go. Uh, not a question, but a comment. Thanks, Lucas, first. Um, I'll just say that on the reprioritization point, I think the one thing, and, and maybe more generally as well, one thing to keep in mind is that the experience here is very much web and HTTP. And uh, the use cases that this group is talking about are a little more specific, right? So when we're thinking about live streaming, for instance, reprioritization might actually be more useful than it has been for the general HTTP um, cases. But with that, yeah, and that's that's the one, just one comment I had. Just to respond to that quickly, I think I, I, I agree. Like, there's always a case. Like, we wouldn't have, have gone to the effort of uh, supporting reprioritization if we didn't think there were use cases. Part of the difficulty in, in the actual deployment of this thing is that the signals that we have for what we call like the initial priority, whether that comes in a frame or a, or a, a header, um, and whether that comes back from the origin server and you've done the merging is now the client is giving like yet another signal about something. And actually the origin might have said, like, I don't I don't believe that the client could be trusted right now. Um, so what to do with a reprioritization signal um, is kind of an open question from my perspective. Um, and again, uh, some of it depends on the speed of transfer. Like a, a mock object is going to be so large that that they will be bigger than a latency bound. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about the content domain to say. Um, yeah, I think that's exactly it. It's the latency of the signaling in relation to the extent to which that signal is, the, ex the amount of time for which the signal is actually used. I think that matters. But, but what I will say is that the ability to reprioritize was a it was a proven DOS factor for like HB2. Like you can just get into this churn state. And so what you'll find is maybe that uh, clients that reprioritize too much <laughs> would, would get put in a, in a naughty list and uh, made more untrustworthy, say, by some heuristics, just, just as an example. And maybe those heuristics are wrong because they were built around a different use case and a different client. But these are the kinds of things that people end up having to do because of how protocols are deployed in reality. Quick question, Lucas. Is there a browser API to change priorities? 
Uh, no. So, so Let that's part why of... nobody, why you don't see anyone using it. <laughs> so, so that was part of the, the problem in so far as you, you can influence them by, you know, by spooky action, um, of, of setting different characteristics of, of things. So you could have a, um, preload link that would cause something to be requested at one stage or some, some kind of resource in this certain kind of element. Um, since then, like that was years ago, there are things like fetch priority. A W3C API, uh, where you can you can nudge what the browser uh, would would normally do. So, so I don't know some resource in a certain context, like an image that's in the above the fold is in the first five images are going to have a certain priority, and you might want to boost one more than it would normally have, and you can say it's got a high priority, um, and that might move it up like one uh, in one in urgency level up. Uh, but again, even trying to understand that is incredibly complicated. There's a truth table somewhere published by Chrome Devs, um, and it's even hard for me to figure out what's going on there. Closing the queue soon, Mo. So Lucas, this is from the perspective of here's H3, here's similarities that Mach may or may not have on the requirements. Have you thought uh, at all, or do you have any guidance about coexistence of H3 flows with Mach flows, and would a design in mock that mirrors H3 make it easier or does it really it doesn't really matter they're independent and and it wouldn't wouldn't matter if they're similar enough it's hard like when mock started i would really want everyone to use the same thing because that makes my life easier as an implementer um and, but in some ways the the scheduling uh strategy or whatever we we end up calling it doesn't matter as long as maybe the the, the scheduling model it aligns with what people have already implemented. Like it would be easier for me as a maintainer of a quick stack that I don't have to have two different branches of, of scheduling prioritization code. Um, that's partly why I did stuff like the send order extension to see if I could extend the scheduler um, and, and it seemed to work. If it needs to be completely different, that's fine. Um, but I think given that there are deployments already of these things, um, asking people to do complete you know a duplicate amount of work might not get what we want um it's hard though because a propagation of the signals so and I, I think that's mainly you know in web transport land it's easy to prioritize the session creation request but what do you do for uh, expressing the, the priority of a unidirectional stream originating from a publisher uh, carrying something um do you stick it in the stream header maybe uh, and if so, do you really need an ASCII representation? Probably not. Um, so I think there's a lot of options. And I don't think we strictly have to make sure it's the same as HTTP, especially not if it's the right fit, uh, not if it's the wrong fit. Um, I'm not dogmatic with this stuff. All right, the queue is clear. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, I think next up is Mel. Lucas, can you stop sharing, please? Thank you. All right. For six minutes behind schedule. Yeah. You're fine. Just, just take. You have twenty minutes. There you go. Please don't present the data to a love affair. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to reorder and have, like, give you a chance to figure it out or would that be helpful? 
28 minutes now. Yeah. Quick, simple thing I need to say, grant permission. Uh, so get, get, uh, device, uh, oh, oh yes. now it's advocating. There it goes. It's, yeah, your turn. Oh, well, Suhas has got it. Okay. Thank you, Suhas. Well, why don't you start talking? Yeah, let's just take small screen if that's all we do. Go the next slide, I'll talk about some. You can hunt for maximization. Arrow key? Just X, 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 this. I am thinking. Where's the solutions in the room, maybe no. Oh, and you'd be right here. Well, yeah. well, RTC. I see that. That's what I did. So, yes. Okay. So, I want to understand how permissions work. We can't even figure out camera permissions, how we're going to do priorities. <laughs> we got a nice picture of that. That's weird. Did you zoom in on it? Or I, I zoomed in. Oh, okay. So I wanted to put, put Mo in the hot seat. Uh, Mo left the Mo left the meeting. Wow. Well, you're back. Okay. Hey. All right. Can you go to the next slide, folks? Yeah. Yes. All right. And so, start off with a really old mic. Incredibly, and I'll say microphone. Oh, did I? I need to turn off my um. Do I need to turn You're off muted. Meet? Okay. You're good. Um, so first, starting off from the really old stuff, which worked incredibly well, and I'll say why and why it's not used now. So back in 2000 and 2006, we had uh, this uh, voice and video priority um, infrastructure. Uh, so clients, devices, network elements, everything. Um, a lot of dedicated stuff just for prioritizing voice and video. They were on their own separate VLANs, uh, virtual LANs. There were different layer two markings and layer three DSCPs for all that. There was admission policies uh, and policing of that traffic so that admission couldn't be gained. Um, but that required really, really well managed networks, uh, a lot of configuration and management overhead. Um, and that's why it's not really used very much today. Uh, going forward a few more years, uh, Cisco WebEx started using H.264 SVC, which is uh, scalable video coding. And I mean true scalability, not um, not just simulcasting and calling it SVC, but true dependent layers, dependent spatial layers. Is this going out now? Um, so that allowed us to protect both the audio and the video base layer uh, with a FEC scheme um, that's called Reed Solomon. Um, the problem was it requires very high compute and it also requires more bandwidth than just sending a single stream, especially if you have large distribution to a large meeting. Uh, the downstream from the server down to many clients um, is a bandwidth tax for all of those clients. So that's all the past. It worked incredibly well. Um, people today don't understand or realize the huge latencies and the lack of interactivity we have in, in, in conferencing today. Even in WebEx, even Cisco's own products, the latencies are many hundreds of milliseconds, whereas before, back 20 years ago, we had latencies down to sub 100 millisecond easily. Um, it was 
just as good, if not better, than PSTN switching. Um, but it required a lot of infrastructure. It required a lot of management. Um, and that management never carried over inner provider. So unless you were building out your own inner provider network um, and, and SLAs, you wouldn't have this, this management. Um, but it all worked incredibly well. And the same with SVC. If you could stomach the compute and you could stomach the, the bandwidth cost, the experience was much better. You almost always had perfect audio and perfect base layer video all the time. Um, where we are today is actually a step backwards <laughs> in many ways. We don't have any of the network prioritization schemes anymore. They're still in some in some parts of the products, but they're not relied on ever anymore. Uh, so we go over best effort networks. We go over unmanaged networks. Um, we try to use hardware as much as possible, uh, except for when there's new interesting things like new video codecs. If you one came out and we didn't have hardware anywhere, so we had to build our own software video codec. Um, that works really well. We don't use SVC anymore because of the high compute and the bandwidth overhead. So we're just using temporal scalability, which is technically not scalable video coding. Temporal scalability is built into every every video codec ever since the very first one. Um, we don't use spatial scalability. We do we do simulcast instead of spatial scalability. So the demo that Suhas posted earlier, that was simulcasting three independent videos that all happen to be the same video at different qualities. So much like ABR um, ladders, uh, that kind of that kind of strategy. We still do the same protection of audio and video. The base layer of the video, even though it's a simulcast stream, we still protect it with the same Reed Solomon FEC. And that FEC is always active uh, to probe for additional bandwidth. So when you um, when you want to try to figure out, do I have more bandwidth to send a higher rate stream? That can be destructive to your current streams. And if you use FEC to probe that, it's less destructive. It's usually not destructive at all. Um, we still do have some elements of network prioritization where we think it's ubiquitous, like Wi-Fi WMM is ubiquitous. So we do that. We mark the audio and video packets uh, with that. Uh, where fast lane exists, which is uh, really only in um, mostly uh, Cisco products and Apple devices, uh, where that's available, that all, that it's also used. Uh, we've experimented with ECN. That's the low fidelity original ECN, not the high fidelity L4S. Uh, but there's no wide, wide deployment of that. We don't we don't see that it um, that it's preserved in enough cases. I know there's conflicting data on on that, but we don't see we don't see the the clear value there until it's really widely deployed. Um, and the the really what we end up relying on the most is congestion control, not priority. So the reason you have priorities is because you have congestion, right, at the bottleneck. And the congestion control at that bottleneck is what has to back up the queues. Um, so having effective congestion control there is really important for your priority system. And delay detecting congestion controls for real-time media help avoid self-inflicted harm. Um, and the general strategy is adapting very fast down, but being very conservative to go back up with FEC probing. That has a bad user experience sometimes because you'll be stuck on a lower resolution for longer than the network can really support. Um, but it's one of the it's one of the problems that we'd like to see solved with with newer techniques. So when we talk about priority, um, the obvious thing that everybody should realize is that. Everybody will try to set everything to maximum priority pretty quickly. Um, and so when you do that, nothing matters. And that's the first pitfall. Uh, ITF is really good about security considerations, privacy considerations, but really bad in the protocols being gamed by the true application developers, not an attacker, not a rogue actor, but the smart developers actually gaming the protocol, um, bending it and, and violating some of its you know, original principles. And so any priority system, whether it's in the platform, whether it's in the hardware, whether it's in the network, will be gamed by every app. Because why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they get an advantage to do that? Another major pitfall is failure to model all the cross traffic happening, even within your own app. Your own app has many other connections, signaling, metrics. Uh, startup is usually a flurry of activity that kills the most important part of hello when you're trying to uh, start up your streams. Um, and then other apps, other traffic are, are never ever modeled. 
uh, and so just just to the break, Christian was saying, um, oh, we just throw more bandwidth out of it and best effort works. No, because everybody will saturate all the bandwidth you ever give them. There's no such thing as enough bandwidth. You will always get saturating flows and you will always compete against those saturating flows. And so you need ways to deal with that. Um, do we want to pause for questions or we're just yeah, flying through? Talk to you. Uh, let's, just, let's fly through real, real quick. Only two more minutes and, and we'll be done. Um, the failure to look at the lower layers underneath you. Um, so most quick stacks now are a little bit more tightly coupled with understanding what cues are in, in the Linux kernel, what cues are in the NIC itself. Um, not the NIC itself, but some fancier techniques do know and understand what the NIC itself is is uh, is doing. Um, so not knowing those layers is is usually a pitfall so that, like Alan said earlier, you queue up too much to those layers and boom, you think all that stuff, it's technically in flight to you. It's not in the air, but it's in flight to you because you can't control it. So not knowing those layers is is always a problem. We need to fix that. And relying on priority to fix long-term persistent congestion is always a problem too. I know there's some designs here where people want to, and even some of our own demos, want to just keep things building up queues in, in, in indefinitely. Um, so that's more like persistent congestion. The app should take immediate action when it detects that. So the role of priority is really for transient congestion at the bottleneck, that's when you want your priority mechanism to work. And the back off signals should come pretty fast within a round trip or two. And so your app makes a better decision about the long-term rate to match the network rate. So we shouldn't, I don't think we should spend much time figuring out what's the ideal priority mechanism for long-lived persistent congestion. Because I think that's an app flaw, that's an app bug. Um, and also there's a lot of talk about strict priorities. When we when we deployed the things that did do strict priorities, like the voice VLAN stuff, the, the voice EF stuff, the Wi-Fi WMM, uh, AC voice stuff. All of those are strict priority markings. The The problem with all of those is, like I said before, apps game them. And so you'll see all of the traffic shoved in the voice queue. Um, and that quickly leads to killing the voice queue itself. And so you always have to have policers or rate limiters on those techniques that, that use strict priority. Or you end up adding, having to add fairness mechanisms anyway to avoid unintended starvation. People are talking about strict priority because they want intended starvation of some less important flows, but there'll always be some unintended starvations or even priority inversions. You don't realize that this is depending on this and you've starved it. Um, so if we add a mechanism, I know strict priority sounds simple and, and easy, but we should keep in mind that almost every mechanism like that has had to do something more complex like policing or fairness added to it. And then finally, as implementation note, all of these data plane level priorities need to be mirrored or aligned with process and thread level priorities. We see a lot of experience with implementers that don't understand the, the, the coupling between their processing and their data plane markings. And so you can end up with starvation inversion of those. Okay, so, sorry, Christian, go ahead. All right, at least 10 minutes for discussion. Yeah, since you put words in my mouth, <laughs> I didn't say that best effort by itself solved the problem. I said a combination of best effort and adequate AQM does solve the problem. Agreed. So I, I really like this last slide, but I want to go back to your earlier statement that the WebEx of today is, is not as good as the WebEx of 2007. And, and, but I would say today, I, I can sit in an internet cafe in, in Zambia and have a conversation with someone at home in Bangalore. I couldn't do that in 2007. And I think it's a lesson that ubiquitous access to good enough performance trumps premium access to a constricted set of people for a, a large scale protocol. So I think the WebEx of today is pretty wonderful for the goal of global communication and perhaps a better fit for that. And I, I don't know where we see Mark, but I would, I would like Mark to be more like the WebEx of today at first, and maybe we customize it later for vertical applications where we control all the endpoints. But we wanted to work over the general internet. We wanted to work globally, I would think. And therefore, maybe there's some lessons from that of the, the steps you've taken since 2007 might be appropriate for Mark too. Ideally, we can address the very broad deployments as well as the very important focused, you know, high performing deployments. Hopefully we can address both in the protocol.
uh, two points. One, starting backwards from what you just said, and I, I agree with what you said more, which is that I think mock ultimately should be a framework, right? That individual implementations will be able to optimize for the deployment scenarios that you're building for. So I, I would expect that it should be able to serve both masters, so to speak. Um, uh, separately, Mo, thank you. This is great. I really enjoyed the entire presentation. Uh, you, uh, um, the last, I, I want to highlight this one that you pointed out because this this does keep coming up in various conversations about transient and persistent congestion. There is no solution for persistent congestion but to stop sending into the network. That's what persistence means. If you keep sending into a persistent network, you build an infinite queue, theoretically speaking. Um, transient congestion is something where you can you can perhaps Optimize the problem, however, is that transient congestion, co congestion is not predictable by definition. So if you use past history to predict what you're going to do, which means that you say, hey, you know, my congestion was I dropped packets. So in the next round trip time, I'm going to assume that I'm going to continue dropping packets. That assumption doesn't necessarily hold true. That said, we are always going to make imperfect decisions here. And they're going to be wrong a lot of the time. But you work uh, with the information you have and with imperfect knowledge. So the answers can't be perfect and they won't be. But yeah, I, the separation between transient and persistent is one of time scales, and I think that's really important to remember because congestion control priorities operates in the small time scale uh, regime, and then you have like ABR algorithms and and various other things that operate in the larger time scale regimes. Separating those two is very useful. Uh, thanks, Mo. Uh, I just wanted to add to what Jana said about uh, transient congestion. One thing that, uh, in general, we also need to think about uh, is the reaction to a transient congestion depends on the application that's being used. Like for in an in interactive application, you want the detection and reaction to be in time scale much smaller than, say, what delivery for that matter. So, what do we think about this? Like, we need to kind of uh, your point on how do we make this transient uh, transient condition work is more important than persistent uh, condition. And another fact today, all, all persistent congestion starts off as transient congestion. You don't know that it's persistent. You get to some point, right? And then you just you'd say, wow, this is not transient anymore. And then back pressure has to be applied. But I, I don't see a mechanism in mock today for ident both identifying that point and for communicating. Well, well the, 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 the point is that um, congestion control and prioritization are very tightly coupled. And your congestion controller in your sender is what would tell you that it's seeing ingestion. And I consider that persistent. If, if, even if it's if it's a few round trips or more, you need to take action. You're not gonna just wait it out, you know? <laughs> I'm gonna wait another five seconds uh, and, and blast you. So the, the sender is gonna see the, the send queue growing, right? And it's it's got its back pressure signal, but we're in the mock layer. We don't have a control message to go upstream to say, whoa, you're sending too much stuff at the moment. But but I think there's a contract between. Okay, but that's like brute force, right? We it's it's all or nothing. Is there some middle ground? To, could we communicate the rate that we think we can sustain? Would that be more useful than simply unsubscribing? You you have the problem of uh, multicasting. I mean, when you go upstream, your your publisher is sending that stream of data to a million subscribers. If one of them doesn't receive fast enough, what do you do? Slow down all the other ones? Okay, that's, an application. that's an application level strategy. So you know, you, you're right that, that mock is 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 fan out, large fan out, but it doesn't mean identical bits fan out to everybody. Um, there could be application strategies for how that's managed. If you're doing scalable video, you could do two temporal layers with 60% of the bits in one and 40% and in the other. And so you have a way to to back off when you get a congestion signal from your congestion controller. So there could be application specific ways to, to handle it, not forcing the publisher to change what it's what it's sending. Lucas. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, sorry, I just, uh, we, we kind of touched on it with a rate limiting discussion. Um, I know there's some stuff going on in Scone as well. Um, but for me, like what what is, is rate limiting persistent congestion or is it something different? Like when when the network decides to limit a, a particular flow between a client and a server, um, that can be, uh, you know, 
done as packet loss. Is is that the congestion we're talking about, or is it a different kind of thing? Even if it maybe manifests the same way, like are we going to try and use priorities to get around rate limits, or can we use other protocol tricks to get around the rate limits themselves, or or is this part of the scone discussion, which is those rate limits would be expressed and communicated into apps such that we don't need the priority to try and fix this this longer time frame issue than a, a momentary or transient thing. I think the answer is in the question that you're asking, and you're, 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 I think you you have the answer there already, that you cannot do anything for persistent congestion with priorities. I mean, it's like trying to, I don't know, it's like trying to pave a road with a screwdriver. It doesn't work. Um, and so you can only do certain things for transient congestion. Priorities falls in that space. Congestion control falls mostly in that space. Persistent congestion, yes, one could say that uh, congestion control also falls in trying to address that space, but it's not addressing anything. It's really like figuring out what you can send at. Persistent, in my mind, just means something that's not going away. So it could happen because the network decided to rate limit you or because there are other flows that started to go and they aren't leaving the network either. But I, like I said, to me, they're about time scales, not about anything else. Mo, can I um, ask a question on the prior slide? Uh, so Obviously, Is different. Uh, oh no, <laughs> two. Yes. Um, obviously, different people have different round trip times and, and such. And so, is there does the uh, application vary its kind of latency targets and then latency targets depending on that? And does it vary its jitter buffer depending on how um, reliable the connection is or how fast it is or like like is there? Uh, like how does how does it how does it adapt to the I get that like it's like okay don't send stuff you don't have bandwidth for but like e even then there's still like other factors like how does it adapt to those uh, so so um it's a misfit for mock because you know the, the the app servers are true servers right they have a lot of logic they have a lot of business logic that mock relay is never going to have so our app servers can you know do all kinds of stream thinning and 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 it knows the 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 jitter buffer intolerances of the receivers. So th there's there's no um, there's no restriction on all the stuff that it can do. Mock relays are going to be really restricted. They can't so, um, they can't play those tricks. So, but but I have a question. What signals is it receiving from either upstream or the client? Oh, so so the, usually one way delay is actually measured. So RTP doesn't let RTP only gives you the RTCP only gives you the round trip. But with custom signaling or with RTCP extensions, you get the true one way delay. And so you do one way delay both ways, and you get um, your expected you know, latencies, and you also know from, you know, app logic, the jitter buffer sizes in each of those for each media stream, you know, just from hard coding, you know, what your clients are. And, um, and, and jitter buffers definitely do change sizes based on how much jitter they're seeing. And you, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're looking yeah. At, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I was wondering. It's yeah. not, it's not like fixed sort of zone. I didn't but, know if the client was communicating something like, hey, like, I have a really janky connection, or is the server like looking at the one-way delay, going like, "Geez, that's pretty variable," or both? Both. Okay, I'm gonna close the queue soon. Okay, uh, Jahed. Uh, so l let me summarize this discussion. So we're talking about condition control and priority, and and literally that means two different things to me. So condition control is basically you get some kind of like queuing measurement on your Packers you will send and all these things, and then you do rate adapt. And then you have a budget, you can do rate adaptation. And when you do rate ad adaptation, you can actually maintain priority queues on your sender side. So you can pick what you want to set. So that's that's a different thing for me. Like, what is the condition control reaction? And how do you, what do you do when you have condition? And in the mock case, it's even, even kind of like a bit mystery to me because now what Kulin has showed us before, condition can happen in different places. And you are very right, Mo, just saying like the, the here the mock relays are very restricted. They don't have much to play with. So my suggestion would be like, let's have condition control is a bit different kind of thing uh, than the priority. Uh, don't solve the condition control with the priority thing. So that, that would be my suggestion here. I agree with that. I think that's, yeah, I agree. Um, the one thing I was, uh, going to ask about more is in this case, 
I'm curious to understand how um, when you say FEC is used for actively actively used for probing for additional bandwidth, and you also have uh, delay detecting congestion controllers that are fast adapting down. Um, do you see interactions between those two, and like how do you work through them? Because with the FEC, I imagine you're sending more and more data, presumably, without actually having true real data to send. You're just like packing more and more data. But then at some point, you're going to hit like some uh, Q build up, and you're going to have to ramp down. Can you say, say just a bit more about that? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, so like I mentioned, that there's delay detection. So if you're, if you're building Q yourself based on what you're sending, um, you increase your send rate, your latency goes up, then you immediately know and you back you back off again but the effect only ramps up to the media rate so you don't you don't just you don't just probe for infinite bandwidth you don't probe the, the link speed is you probe for your maximum me media rate so if you're yeah if your maximum ladder is you know four megs you're not going to probe about four megs um so the effect just helps to avoid the probes causing any damage to the actual streams uh one more case about the uh, FEC actually Reed Solomon is pretty computationally expensive unless yes. I'm like, yes. do you ever have problems where the clients like their effective bandwidth drops, not because they don't have enough like network, but because like the CPU just like crawls, like yeah. basically like the Reed Solomon is like busting up your bandwidth measurements because like, I don't know, I'm just curious. I mean, if you if you have the WebEx app locally and you look at the CPU, <laughs> you won't be happy. Uh, no, we are still using Reed Solomon. The, the, the problem is we actually wrote a, um, a much simpler draft in IETF for parity effect. Uh, two-dimensional parity effect that gives most of the benefits of Reed Solomon. You can do row and column, so you can handle burst burst wise. The benefit of Reed Solomon is you can handle a burst of loss. Yep. You can handle yep. ten packets in a row, which oh, yeah. no yeah. parity effect is going to solve. But two D parity effect does solve that. Problem is though that it's statistically not as good as Reed Solomon. So if you have the compute, Reed Solomon is always much better. Uh, if you have the money, you can buy Raptor <laughs> or some fountain codes that that are comp computationally less. Than Reed Solomon, but uh, I mean, more we have, if we have enough time, then we'll just wait for all the patents to expire. Well, I, I, I see Reed Solomon there. We're getting close the, to that. The, the truth is that we are using we are using Quick, and so the those typically you do Reed Solomon on an iframe because if you look the if you lose the iframe, uh, you you lose a lot of things, and if you do Reed Solomon on an iframe because they cannot be very large. You end up needing to have many levels of Reed Solomon. It's typically like seven or eight degrees of redundancy. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. But in our case, we're using Quick. So you cannot apply Reed Solomon directly to the iframe. You have to apply Reed Solomon within Quick to the stream packets that are carrying the iframe. And that, that's a lot of architecture. I mean, that's, yeah, so that that is an open question. That's an open problem. How do we map FEC onto mock flows? Is it an application level flow? You can you can have a FEC track that protects things. So independent of you know anything in the quick layer, you could have a FEC track that operates on whatever source tracks you want to you want to protect. Um, but what you're talking about is more efficient if you could do uh, FEC at the quick level itself. There've been many proposals in the past. And they've all you know not gained traction for whatever reason. Always here, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Neil is very adamant about keeping it alive, but I haven't seen any traction that it would actually get into an RFC or, or implementation anytime soon. There's, there's no demand, right? MOQ creates demand, right? And, yeah. I mean, I would argue that it's the last thing I'll say about this particular point because it, it is a rabbit hole. And I would argue that that architecturally, it does not make sense to go all the way down into the quick level. Quick is too low for something like this. You need a certain amount of agility. You need to be able to have fine control about exactly, as you were saying earlier, we maybe use uh, Reed Solomon for the iframes and something else for the P frames and so on and so forth. You need a lot more control and, and, and agility and flexibility in how you do this thing. I would recommend, I would not want to have this happen deep inside of the guts of- Well, well uh, just to uh, echo Christian's point, I, don't, I think what he meant was that the, uh, the quick layer is handling packets and erasure codes are erasing packets and recovering erasures of packets you could do virtual pack you know frames you could yeah. you could do erasure codes for frames and recover frames yeah. but what's really being lost is the entire packet so it would be more efficient to do it at the quick layer because that's the erasure that's happening um but you could still do it as an application level construct 
it just is not quite as efficient. It's more flexible. But when you're using data grams, when you're using data grams, though, you are actually. All right, we, we actually need to move on. Yeah. I'm going to cut it. But yeah. Lucas has been in the queue for a while, so Lucas, go ahead, and we're going to move to the next presentation. Yeah, I just want to say, as as a quick chair, we've had a number of requests from people to present about the FEC experiments that they've been doing, and they always get run out of time. I think Francois Michel was going to, uh, in particular, has done a lot on the media. Um, I think he wanted to present a mock one time and also ran out of time. Um, I'd encourage people to reach out to him um, and discuss some of this stuff. He will, I believe, be in Vancouver. So if anyone just wants to grab a coffee with him, like he did a whole PhD on on this topic. So um, I'm sure he's got some inputs on this stuff, very much to the point of recovering, you know, application data, not just the packets, yeah. as far as my very limited understanding goes. Okay, Mo, please stop sharing. Can you just say, it, it was Francois, I, mi I missed the name there. Say it again, Lucas. Francois Michel, but I'll type it in the, the chat. Okay, Victor, you're up. Did it go to the meeting chat? Do you see where it went? I think it did. The problem of being at the back of the chair cameras is I'm going to sit in the back. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, I got it. It went to the meeting chat. That works really well. For anything that's going to I'm just saying that at which level you're, yeah. you're, you're trying to figure out how to do it across all things. That's just. Oh, that was actually what cool. Thank, Thank you for fixing up on the garbage. Yeah, I'm trying to try to pause to the next one. So it's nice Victor or Mike? Yes, okay. Okay, Victor, you're up. Sure. Uh, I'm going to present some slides about some thoughts I have about priorities and uh, what they can they cannot do and how we should think about that so uh th they're a bit rough because that mostly came up with them while flying here so i'm sorry if they're a bit disorganized but they mostly focused the around uh, the like two counter examples i have and they relate to some i say commonly held i don't think they're actually that common or held, but uh, they still deserve a uh, close examination. So in the first counter example uh, is that there is this idea that like newest first is in many cases optimal and the cases when you don't want to newest first are the cases where like if you don't have video, you would just show a spinner wheel and buffer. But if you can skip video, you usually want newest first. So uh, the counter example here is like you have a link that has three megabits of bitrate. You have videos that's two megabits and your gob size is five seconds and your buffer is 10 seconds. So this is a live video that has a fairly uh, like large buffer. And the important thing is the buffer is fits more than one gob. So here's like, assume that theoretically, like for some reason, your connection just went silent for, for a while. And now you're in a situation where you only have two seconds worth of video, the buffer, and then there is like a new gob that you don't have at all. Uh, so this is a, if you do something like, uh, newest first what you would do is instead of filling the gobs that's like right next to you uh you would fill in a gob in the future and then you would try to fill in the first gob so this, this is, would be like the diagram at the bottom and what would happen is you would fill the new gob and then there would be the time where you try to place the old gop and you would not have it because you spent all the time filling up the newest gop. Uh, and the reason this is bad compared to something like oldest first, if you do oldest first, this will basically, as long as you have any buffers, this will work because remember in our settings, the bit rate is larger than, the bit rate of your connection is larger than the video payload you're trying to send. So this is 
an example, like there are, are scenarios in which nearest first is probably optimal. There are scenarios in which oldest first is probably optimal. And my general intuition is that's like uh, newest first is more pessimistic. It's like I want to give up on some data in past because I, I think I would have trouble even getting data in future. Uh, so that's one of the motivating examples for what I'm going to talk. Uh, the second counterexample is a bit more complicated. So there is this idea that uh, uh, like you can express the priorities in some way, provide you with this really optimal scenario where you just order things from like the highest priority to lowest priority. Uh, and if you send them in this order, this will uh, be like provide you with some optimal experience given your link condition. And the reason this is not quite true is that if you have a lot of videos that you can send right now, this is probably to some extent true. But there are scenarios in which you don't necessarily immediately have the videos that you're going to send. So in my here hypothetical scenario, it's like I have AV stream of total two megabits. One of them is like there is a very tiny audio stream. There is one megabit based, and then there is a one megabit enhancement layer. And like, let's assume our link is like about one point four, so it's like somewhere awkwardly where it can send full base, but it can send full base plus enhancement. Uh, and what happens often is you're in a Wi-Fi link, and Wi-Fi links aggregate traffic and uh, your audio frame, since they're small Wi-Fi links, like I'm not going to wake up radio to send that side. So I'll slip and bundle them together. Uh, so there are scenarios where like you don't have any audio arriving. And then you look at what you're going to send. And you're like, oh, I sent all audio I have. I sent all the base layer I have. Let me try sending enhancement layer because that's the next thing I have that has the highest priority because I sent everything like with even higher priority. So that's the next thing. And now I send this and now audio arrives and I ran out of my congestion window because uh, I, I sent the, the enhancement player instead of waiting for audio. So th this is like priorities let you trade off sending A and B, but uh, this is about sending A versus not sending anything and waiting for more data arrived from publisher. So this is another uh, scenario that I believe is common more in the more lower latency you target, because the lower latency you target, the less your buffer from publisher to, uh, so yeah. Okay. So can I ask, is the, is the answer here that I want always want to send a little bit of audio and then prioritize my audio and my video with what's left. Well, I don't have an answer for this scenario. Like one thing you could potentially do if you know the bitrate of your audio is like 64 kilobits per second. One thing you could do is, OK, I have congestion controllers that gives me 1.4 megabits. I will never, I will always reserve some window for audio. That is one thing, but uh, note that here I'm not trying to propose any specific solution yet. I'm just pointing out, I'm trying to explain why the problems we're solving are actually really complicated to solve optimally. But can I ask a question about this scenario? Sure. Because is, isn't this, we were just talking about persistent transient connection. I mean, in this, trying to put two megabits through a 1.4 megabit pipe is persistent connect congestion. So are we trying to solve this problem or are we not trying to solve it? Uh, so this is, yes, this is a bad. This is a disadvantage of this scenario, but like, it is entirely possible. Yeah, if you could come up with a more a more complicated scenario in which like this occurs due to like you usually have two point five, but then you it lowers to one point four for like ten seconds and then goes back to two point five. Uh, but it's, it's, that that kind of change happens. So like, persistent congestion happens on the scale of like. 10 seconds, let's say. Mm. But this is something that can happen like on a scale of one second. Like this is the trade-offs that we're forced to the, deal with here. I mean, this is uh, not so dissimilar from like the Google Meet and the like anytime you have temporal scalability where like you have multiple layers of enhancement tracks and like 
they don't you, you don't want to jump between different frame rates all the time so like if you, you're going to be able to send say the next if you don't think you're going to be able to get the next layer of enhancement through for like any extended period of time for whatever reason like don't start sending it right but you need logic i guess to say like i know that that next layer of enhancement is going to be an extra megabit and like i don't have that much bandwidth so like i guess i shouldn't start sending it at all i mean that's ideally i think what you want to figure out right um yeah. yeah, we've we've actually had this exact problem even at the transient congestion, the the the, the test that Suas so was showing. We had this problem, and Christian knows well because we asked for a lot of Pico Quick changes uh, for it. The congestion controller inside of Quick was not reacting fast enough to the congestion, so it would fill the the pipe with the the high layers that we don't want. So we lost the ability to prioritize it. It's already in flight. Um, and this exactly happens when your Wi-Fi jumps from a high fire rate to a low fire rate temporarily. You're on edge of, of something or there's, you know, a, a radio interference or something. So when your Wi-Fi fire rate drops, all of a sudden you can't get all your stuff through in that little short period. We've already dispatched to the quick layer too much data, the enhancement layer data, and it stomps on all of the lower, the, the audio and lowest base layer. Um, and so that, that is a casualty of, of that, of that kind of system. The, the right thing to do would be faster detection at the congestion controller, smaller windows so that it dispatches, you know, it, it, one for one with the with the OS's pacing, not filling and pipelining the OS queues. Because as app limited traffic, we should never try to fill um, the, the pipeline. The, the reason the queues exist is for pipelining the data to hit link rate, right? We don't ever want to hit link rate for media. Right, we, you, you, there's no media that's going to occupy your full line rate, so we don't care about keeping the pipeline filled. We care about the opposite, keeping the pipeline empty, so that we can react immediately to whatever the OS or the NIC tell us to do. Uh, all right, so, so that was my second. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to quickly chime in. Yeah, this is effectively you can't prioritize if it's on a network queue. And the whole point is you need to back off as quickly as possible to avoid queuing the way you don't have control over it. Um, there's ways around it, but not really. I mean, some of it's fundamental to the internet. Like most saying you could reserve some headroom. Theoretically, you could use half the available network, but that also has a user impact, right? Now you have a lower quality stream. It, it, uh, it doesn't work because when you have one of those Wi-Fi issues, you're losing 90% of the bandwidth. Yeah, so, so so I think this is kind of fundamental in that we will have cases of buffer bloat where you will accidentally deliver the wrong data because you just couldn't react fast enough. The, the, the other reason is that it takes two RTT to detect actual congestion. So basically, when you are making a decision, a scheduling decision based on congestion control, you are making a, a, a scheduling decision based on the state of the network two RTTs ago. And so you are going to have this fill up for two RTT if you don't do something else. Now, there are some, as Mo said, there are something else that could be done. For example, before sending every packet, you could do a system call to go sense the state of the queues in front of the Wi-Fi driver. You, you could do that. Problem is it's bloody expensive, then you are going to bump your CPU. So it's, it's, there are, all, there are all, 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 kinds of, all kinds of trade offs. Yeah, I think my point is like, prioritization in general is best effort. I don't see this as a problem per se, it's just a reality. Like you're, you're just not gonna be able to prioritize as well as you want. So, I mean, I agree there's a limit to what you can do in anything. I mean, it, you know, this gets back to, you You know, you can't put six pounds of shit in five pound, pound bail unless you have really good surface tension. But um, the, <laughs> it, it, the, the, we, we still want to push down where that is. And so much of our current design was used for maximizing throughput, not minimizing loss in user experience in this real time stuff. And I, I do think that we have to get into this type of stuff of like, and some of it, you know, some of it happens at a much, it, it is an outside this working group quick level sort of, you know, what, how the congestion controllers work to be more appropriate for real time since, and the fast detection of that clearly impacts that. But then we have the scheduling problem on top, given, you know, we're not here to fix the, to change the congestion control and quick. We're, that happens too, but it's giving us some signals that we're using to try and figure out how to deal with like these types of use cases. And, and I agree, this is a, 
this is a use case you do run into and you can work around without changes in the underlying systems, but you can improve work around even better with underlying changes. Do, do people have a lot more on the slide or should we let Victor keep going? Sure. Okay. So, well, make it quick, John. And we'll go on. I, I just wanted to say that. The, uh, um, I just wanted to say that this this um, one of the things I want to highlight in this, and and Victor and I were talking about this earlier, is that being able to make decisions as late as possible is very useful in real time systems, broadly speaking. So if you're able to actually hold off on like what what you were talking about, which is that if you could like probe and find out when the Wi-Fi, uh, uh, when you're able to actually send on the Wi-Fi and then decide what you want to send at that point, ideally, in theory, that's useful. Expensive, but it's useful. In, in, in and practice, your throughput dogs actually. No, I get that. I get that. I'm not. I'm not saying that this is actually uh, in practice how you want to do it. And and there are going to be other practical considerations. But I think as a guiding principle, it's useful to think about that across the stack. Uh, oh. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Now, now that I've introduced some motivating examples, let me talk about like how I think we should approach and what your priorities. And let's start with uh, use cases. So uh, the use case I'm going to think about, like, is like the very generic MOQ use case, which I think is like actually the most important and to some extent the only use case, not in the sense that. It's the only thing you can use MOQ for, but in the sense that this is like where most of the value for MOQ comes, is that MOQ is mostly about the situations where you have some data that's generated on the fly somewhere and you need to deliver it somewhere else in a timely manner. Uh, now, you might point out that there are other things we want to do, like VOD, uh, and I will say that's fair that we might want to do them, but we might not necessarily want to think of them now for multiple reasons. Uh, number one, solving two different problems at the same time is hard, and one of those problems is already hard. Uh, number two, uh, we probably could, once we solve one, we could probably figure out how to solve other because other is to some extent much easier. Uh, and number three, when we're trying to improve on VOD, we're effectively trying to say that we're better than HLS and Dash for VOD, and uh, that this already like HLS and Dash over something like HTTP three is already a pretty well tuned system. So I propose that we mostly start with thinking on like live real time use cases, and then think about VOD after we solve the the actual hard use case that most people want to use MLQ for. Uh, uh, yes, well, uh, look. Yeah, I, I agree with prioritizing live. It's a much, much harder use case, right? And, and VOD is, is simple compared to, to live. But I I just want to reiterate, I don't want VOD dropped off the use case table. Yeah, it is like, definitely, it, yeah. Yeah, that's all. But uh, for prioritization, it's a much, much simpler problem when we can focus on the live use case. Yeah, and to that point, um, VOD can be more on the receiver side. The subscriber can resubscribe. I'm okay doing it HLS dash style because we have the latency to be able to, to you know, subscribe. We don't need to give hints for real time congestion control because it's VOD. But um, yeah, just just make sure we can deliver VOD data over mock in order, please. Um, that's it. That's about it. Yeah, so to elaborate, but like those use cases are like, so the two hard things that makes it this timely manner is we want data to be delivered that when it's relevant and we don't want to be it delivered when it's irrelevant and that hard because the networks are unpredictable. And on the fly is the part where it's generated in an unpredictable manner. So that's another, uh, things that makes it complicated. And there are many cases in which we target like latency ranges, types of networks, types of payloads, and those also factor into this. Uh, but so uh, I think now my general observation about what kinds of proposals we've uh, like discussed at this point, and this includes things like delivery timeouts, that was my thing, uh, is that generally we try to construct them in the following way. Like there is some bit of information that someone sent or publisher, someone from the application puts 
onto the payload and then really just reads it and it treats it as an extraction to do exactly and we what we say and we specify a bunch of those methods and we hope that like we will specify more and more of those and as we specify a lot of them we will eventually arrive to something that works and will produce optimal experience uh and i in generally going to call it like a kitchen sink approach because well you 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 have some tools and you hope that you would be able to cook something up with some tools but like you're not necessarily thinking of what you're trying to cook you're just trying to like stock your kitchen but you never have you it's kind of like if i want to went to buy some tools for kitchen but they never cooked in my life before <laughs> Um, Victor, you're you're 18 of your allotted 20 minutes. You can run over a bit, but given okay. how many slides you have, you need to go a little faster. Thanks. Okay, sure. Uh, so, what's the uh, alternative I'm proposing? Okay, let's step back about what's like what's the fundamental problems that MOQ tries to solve when it's like, like trying to figure out uh, how to solve the network performance. And the fundamental problem here is. Okay, I have some data. I need to figure out which of the data I should send and possibly when and if I should send it at all. Uh, and now this, this is actually like a very hard problem. It's both, to some extent, both priorities problem, but it's also, this is very much like the congestion control, which where it's a congestion control, it just typically tells you when you should send next. So this is, in some sense, a superset of that. Uh, so, like, uh, the way I would, like, any abstract MOQ sender can be represented, as, like, a, with this simple diagram where you, like, you have a bunch of things from send subscriber, publisher, and network, and look at what's earlier, just telling, like, that, like this, this, in terms of syncing of this in certain signals, then they feed into some algorithm, and then the algorithm figure out what to send next. Uh, and this algorithm like has a bunch of inputs and outputs. So generally outputs, like the most general output is like the decision of what to send exactly and when, and like if you call it this algorithm repeatedly, this is the most general solution. Uh, so like priorities, for instance, like the way we typically think that there are like MOQ sendings, there would be like free control loops. There is like the priorities loop, which decides what to send. Then under it, there is like congestion control loop that decides how much you send. And then above it, there is also like ABR that may or may not be even like on the same party in the connection. And you have this free con control loops interacting they, I don't believe that like they necessarily should. It's definitely the most general way to structure it. Uh, but uh, like, there, there is no reason to always separate them. And there have been some research projects for video sending in which all three of those were basically solved at the same time. Uh, but in some cases, you do have to like reduce yourself to whatever API you have available. Like if you're doing web transport, you have to do web transport priorities. Uh, I, I was just going to say we're, we're 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 reduced by scope in this working group to more or less what you're suggesting here, right? Like we're not trying to solve all three of those together, right? Uh, <laughs> by the charter of the working group. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the other part is the inputs, and the inputs are like what exactly information we're giving and how. So in like old proposals, that would be like delivery times, that would be like a very specific number with specific, but we in general just should think about inputs. And then there is some algorithm. And so the first claim I'm going to make, which might be controversial, is that I don't think that in the wild, we will see the one way, well, like that's all MOQ relays approach it. We can see this, but like with things like congestion control, we've been trying to solve problems like congestion control for like 40 years, and we come up with new and new things every five years. So I expect to see like a lot of more development here. And part of this development would have to happen on senders because the senders are like, the entities that are closest to the decisions, decisions being made. Uh, Victor, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to comment one thing on the previous slide about we're limited potentially by the APIs that we're dealing with. Yeah, kind of, but because you can 
basically just re-implement the entire priority scheme in user space and only supply data to the stream when like you decide it should be written to the wire. Like if you really want to maintain an ultra low buffer approach, you could potentially basically starve every single stream and only give it exactly like what you want when you want it. Uh, set almost once unless you want like to control over your retransmission priorities and you're kind of okay. Sorry, except like for that. Easier, okay, but you do. Yeah. Well, you can move it up the stack, and so I think. I think a priori, I wouldn't say that it limits us, but maybe ex post, but it may do some things we don't like. Yeah. So, uh, what, so the the second thing I'm trying to say, so because I do not expect that like we'll have like the one set algorithms that everyone will always use forever. Uh, I expect that like we need to think more carefully about what kind of inf inputs we do. So for publishers, this is kind of easy because the original publisher, when it sends something to the relay network, it knows what it can do. It knows everything about media, so it has a lot of insight into what to do. Now, so I think the hard question here is what exactly we provide as an information in like input to the relays and how far we want it to be detached from like the description of like use case scenario we have. So uh, like, yeah, uh, Colin. Um, so I see where you're going on that, but I, I think that the number of algorithms and signals there are pretty well constrained. And what I really, like, I think a large part of why HTTP priorities, it's somewhat, and many HTTP things have somewhat failed is because complete vagueness on what servers need to support. So I think the innovation will happen on the client edge, on the publishers and the subscribers can do, they can implement, you know, you can make a new algorithm like AVR or something like that, right? You can do all kinds of things. Um, but to be able to successfully do that, you need to know how the relays will behave. Um, so I think that for this to succeed and to be able to have an environment where people can innovate with new algorithms and new things, we, we have to be fairly specific on what the, re what the algorithm is in the relays. Shouldn't be using this mic this way. I need another. We should get a different mic. Uh, does that does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, this isn't. You know, I think it's it's about where you're going to innovate. Yeah, it is complicated, and like my my view is like here is fundamentally the easiest place to innovate is the ones that on the center because the center, if there are many control loops, any loop place that is not the center has latency penalty, but the center does not have any latency penalty. Uh, I mean, that's the easiest place to innovate is in like you know what you download into the JavaScript into a browser is a great place to innovate. Like, and you know, a really bad place to innovate by comparison was the da web dab server will magically figure out what locking means and every dab server will do it differently. What happened there was no one could rely on anything. It was impossible to use locks and the dab basically doesn't have locks, which limited the applications you could build. If they picked any one of the locking solutions, it would have been fine. It's no big deal to the web dab because they didn't pick one. It was unusable, right? Um, so I, I, I don't know. When we get into the specifics, I mean, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see the, the variance of this, but um, you know, I, I, I mean, obviously, the algorithm has to be simple and easy for the relays to do, or else they won't do it. Right? I, mean, who, I forget who said, you know, relays well, will do what relays do. But <laughs> I, I mean, my vision to elaborate before I yield to Mike is that, like, my counter example is congestion control, and like congestion control is the typical is a party that does congestion control for your like web app is your CDN, and all CDNs seem to like successfully evolve from like Rena to cubic to BPR like approaches because that mount like measurable benefits for their customers well, and they were in the position to Okay, but this is not true what you just said. I mean like in congestion control, the sender does it. And the best thing that was done for the receivers to have a very flexible recording structure back so the sender could do different algorithms on it. It wasn't the CDN that did it, it was the sender, it was the you know congestion controls the sender. Most yeah, of our but algorithms that's the CDN in, in the web scenarios. That's just a coincidence of what happened to happen there, right? It's not that the CDN was a better place to do it. It was that doing it, specifying it at one end and then allowing the other end to be defined in advance to send the information back that was needed to adapt the algorithms at the one place was the winning design, which is, was the, C, I mean, you're right, CDN in that case, but, you know, so nailing down one end and leaving the other end flexible is often a good internet level architectural sort of way to allow 
migration versus ossification. I guess that's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, I, so if we're I'm, we really got to get through this. So please be brief. This okay. is the last slide, though. No, there's one more. Isn't there one more? Yeah, sure. Okay. Should I go? Yes, please. Okay. Um, the one thing to keep in mind here is that people, the easiest place to innovate is where you can innovate. Hmm. I mean, people will innovate wherever they have control. If you can't push JavaScript into the client, you're not going to innovate there. If you can, you, if all you do is own routers, that's where you're going to innovate. Uh, be it for MOQ or be it for quick. We've seen this happen repeatedly. So uh, my my thing is, I, I agree with what Karan said finally at the end, which is that being able to uh, describe one complete solution, having an opinion on that, but allowing flexibility for others to do is probably the winning strategy here. Um, I just want to second uh, Jana on that one. E even though we have three different congestion control algorithms, at least the ones that we use today in Quick, they're all well specified. They're not open-ended and say, you do whatever you want. So specifying at least one algorithm that uh, defines how uh, a given relay uh, some wants to kind of implement that would be useful. And then also, like right now, we are into the proposal side of the sections. And from again, I'm looking at what the discussions I had, the Cullen and others were had, uh, and Wilber had yesterday. I think the number of inputs are not that many. And through this years, we a couple of years of this one, we have come. We have, we have a fair understanding of what use cases we need to support and what those use cases need. And probably thinking about on proposals and see uh, if we can come up with something simple and deterministic. Uh, really, can uh, implement would be. Good, good for us to go forward. Lucas? Yeah, I, I just wanted to respond to the, we have to define something and everyone has to follow it. Like, as somebody who works at a, a CDN that has broad uses for okay. different origins, different clients, basically everyone is an adversary. Like, whether, whether they mean to or not, they have a way to basically break the entire operation for everybody else so there has like we have to do policing and we have to uh basically ignore musts where we have to like it, uh, that's part of why the hp priorities was very suggestive but ultimately acknowledge ag acknowledgement that like i will ignore you if if it comes to deciding whether to do something that's the perfect solution or something that's good enough because if you if you embed this and ingrain it too much, it becomes not as gamed, but completely easily like monoculture. That there's this, this horrible way to break everyone by just setting this flag, <laughs> and we don't want that. Um, we we do want some expectations, and we do want to to generally understand. Oh, this is the best way, or this is a good way of doing it, and generally it kind of work roughly that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm very much against this strict, this is exactly how it must be. Because the, the success of congestion control is it's sender driven and the receiver doesn't really know. Yes, it gives signals, sure, but like there isn't, you know, there, there isn't a, a well defined definition of what congestion control algorithms are. There's extensions, there's tuning, there's parameters, there's buffers, there's all sorts of other factors that go into it that ultimately don't really matter to the receiver. Christian, are you in the queue? Okay, Victor. Uh, any closing remarks? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I think we'll just like this is uh, the principle. Like, I, I, I hope that like we'll try to make inputs more flexible in terms of what we do, so that if at some point really decides to experiment with an alternative algorithm, we we can and like do not like specify values that like do not are not useful in other cases and expect them to always work. So, so that's my basically proposal. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Please stop sharing. Um I think it's oh. I was just gonna ask you because we have so we have an afternoon where do we want to stick the break, I guess is my question. Um I, I we've been at this for about an hour thirty. I, I think maybe we want to go for another forty five minutes or so and then do a break. If people are okay with that, do we need that now? Can we just run for five and get back here in like five minutes. Right? Okay, yes, be back in five. Five minutes. Go pee. <laughs> How far can you get, John? Too so far from here. Yeah, it's too dark.
Oh, if I tell you nine, it'll be fifteen. Five, four. CDNs that say our max size object is X. Yeah. Others that say Y, right? Like that doesn't like that's just like yeah. it, but it's like you still can decide service. I think I think it's hard because you can't think of the data. That's that's the issue. Right? Right? When you uh, have multiple viewers and you send it upstream, that's like this. Oh, I mean, that's like this stuff for like two people. So it's only for the last miles parameterization. Yeah, it, it's like a uh, buffer reports. It's like, hey, it, it's basically the problem I'm trying to solve. It's like, or remember the dimensions of like, you need to like have some models that want to hear I don't, buffer. I it's don't, like, I, don't it's like, like, I just kind of wish we didn't have that information because it is last. Month. Right, I mean, the first mile will do something to scope. And any any in between any yeah but uh, so I, I mean the first file is identical to the last file except this is hard oh but so you, you have, have a buffer to, you'd have to have like you know service create like reset well, it's only just of, like you type of truth for example you just have a it's it's the problem in like, when you find like an SLA let's say an SLA like after two seconds wrong something yeah for the first file you kind of have to be the most aggressive possible right you have to say the SLA is two hundred milliseconds because a viewer might request to install it. Otherwise, you're going to be sending old data. And that's kind of a problem. Like when you do like a buffer size, it's a race to the bottom. It, it really is like you end up having the target size. What was the time? Yeah, tomorrow. I'm going to do the buffer size. Because if you have a case oh, where viewers said, I'm going to do the You can have like one second or one and a viewer at this five seconds of congestion. Well, I read the microchip scenario. Where you get, uh, the, uh, well, for experience. Not for everybody, but if you're dying, I'm just, just, um, just running back. It's where it's on and on the viewer by well before the sender. I think it's okay in the parameterization side. I think that's like one way we should like increase churches with only the kids that have a what time did we start the break? It's just hard. 223. You know, it's going to take more than five minutes. I went upstairs just to like reduce the log jam. So, when you anyway, the mic location. Whatever. <laughs> um, and I guess it's the long term. 
So my point is to just throw up the questions. Yeah. And walk through them. Okay. We'll see what sort of is not like at light speed, but not really. Let's see. Let's see if it gets anywhere. I mean, I, I mean, are you gonna? Are, yeah, well, I mean, like, I don't know if we, we can convert. Well. I would say that we can converge quickly on answers to those questions. That's, that's worthwhile. Um, yeah, and if, if things are rough, then we can decide whether or not it's going to be productive to discuss it more or just cut it off. Yo! And so, so much the best interim. Yeah, best interim. No, no, the best interim ever was like tweaking. That was from where I was trying. I was pushing like the food trolley. Yeah, so I mean, because at that day, that was that was a government house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me and Magnus was pushing like food trolley for you. I don't know. Paris in June was kind of was not was not a bad interim either. Well, we'll see. We're, we're going to time box this. I don't think we're going to let it drag on. But I mean, if we can't reach agreement, if we can't, if, if we can't reach agreement on these questions, then it's, I think we're doomed. And it'd be nice if people actually came back on time. That doesn't seem to be. Well, we could punish them by no, by no more breaks. We're just going to go two and a half hours. Five. Has a oh, yeah. meeting with the What's that? Ian, he had a meeting with the Oh, I don't know. He had one at twelve thirty. I thought. He said he's going to go with trick. There's no other one. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
warm liquid that caffeinates you. If you want a cappuccino, like forget it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would seriously stop at Starbucks and get a box of black coffee no, if that's. that's... I, I think that'll be there along with the coast. Excellent, thank you. Uh, anything else I can tell anyone? No. Okay, that's it. Okay. Oh, uh, we're going to be in a. Oh, so, yeah, actually, no. One more thing. We're 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 going to be in a cozy little meeting room because we need to get more physical about getting the presidents on the stock. This is way too much space in this room, and we're going to have a Google. We'll have Google Meet on the board, so we can use Google Meet. All right. Every hour we can move into a smaller conference room. And finally, we're in a so nice. <laughs> Turn off the oxygen. Bring your COVID mask. Yeah. Sure. All right. Okay. Thank you, Colin. I'm going to hand it off to my uh, co chair here. Okay. We'll if I can find start going. Uh, that one. Huzzah. Okay. So this was some of the stuff that we put up uh, last week or week and a half ago for people to sort of think about before we jump into solutions. And maybe we can just quickly see and get a sense of what people think about some of these. If there's a lot of consensus, then that will really help us understand that we're at least all on the same page. So um, the first one we came up with is like, what is what is the scope of priority? I, it sounds like people feel like that the scope of priority is kind of is about what choosing to send next. I've heard that over and over again. It, about prioritizing things on the band of the bottleneck link. Does anybody else want to offer any like things about what they think priority is supposed to do that hasn't been covered? What what you got? Yeah. Uh, I think that we have to separate maybe the quick priorities, which is basically what is passed through the quick API and the relative prioritization done by the relay or, or the station, the application level. My, my thought model is that the application level will look at the various tracks that it has to send and the various streams and whatever. And then it has to have enough information about those tracks and and various streams to pass information to the quick layer saying, treat that as pi five and this one as pi three. So it doesn't mean that we have to have the number five and three at the uh, application layer. At the application layer, we have to have enough information so that the relay decides what goes before what. Okay, I, I think that makes sense. Um, the second one, I don't know, does anybody else want to say anything about scope? Maybe not. Um, so, uh, I don't know that we're going to necessarily, if this is a good time to like answer the question about what is about priority models, but I just, there, you know, even today we've talked about systems that have at least three different like mental models of like how you build these, what the queue looks like at the sender side. Um, and so that's something we need to think about when we're looking at what a solution is. Um, but I don't know that we want to dwell on it other than I really don't want to, uh, <laughs> other than I really don't want to do a tree. Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, I, I was going to say, can we just veto tree? Like, I, I don't think anyone really wants that. And if they do, I'll take them aside and have a chat. I mean, the problem with HTTP2 priority tree is that it really should have been a DAG. Um, oh, <laughs> Really, Luke. We're not going in the notes. We're just skipping. <laughs> Luke, did you want to say? Yeah, and I just want to say one thing about priorities. Um, optimization problem. It's impossible to get the uh, optimal solution, so we should really focus on something that's good enough. Do the use cases we want. Otherwise, we're just going to rabbit hole forever because there's always going to be the next bit that could be higher priority to send or more important. But it just gets increasingly difficult to express it on the wire. And I think that's the problem with the trees. It's like you get a lot of complexity for some benefit in theory, but it's just a never ending pit of Th better. That solutions. was meant to be an example of what I meant by the word model and not a recommendation. It was just to get people thinking. Um, Victor? Uh, ideally, we would want some things that you can communicate to the web transport API. Because we, we do have that in Charter. And we kind of adopted some API. And if you, if you want to change it, you should visit now. <laughs> very, very soon. 
Suras? Uh, I think just adding uh, some clarification on what is the scope of the priority. It's a decision that needs to be made when you have multiple things to send, which you need to pick next. Not about what might come in the future. It's about, I have a few things to send, which one should I pick next? That should be the scope, yeah. OK. Uh, I was actually, um, one thing that we haven't done yet, but is was kind of implicit, I think, in some of the presentations is, uh, and maybe this is like a whiteboard thing, is like, can we write down all the inputs that products that actually have been built today, WebEx, what, you know, Luke's, like, what are the inputs from which direction that people are using? Just to like, just have a list of like, here are signals that like, people are using today just so we like can see the space in one spot. I don't know. That'd be useful for me. Like I'm I'm still not sure like exactly what signals WebEx like sends from the client to the server and from maybe the original I don't like I don't know I don't know what those are. Like what is there's gotta be like a bunch of fields that are numbers mm -hmm. and like you mean for like production systems that are yeah, yeah actually production running. or somehow production ish systems. Uh, production would be ideal though, sure. You know, okay. Uh, okay, several people wanted to respond to that. I think, Jana, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that this actually uh, pulls at something I wanted to call out here. The pre there are two things. Uh, one of them is the signaling, and the other one is the decision making, right? So you, if you have the priority model, what I want to ask you is what, are you talking about the decision, uh, uh, the decision at the sender, or are you talking about things that are communicated on the wire? I think I'm talking about the how, like, in some sense, like, maybe what Victor called is the algorithm here. But like, if the algorithm involves some sort of data structure for storing things, like, what, what does that structure look like? If that makes any sense, if you're trying to describe a priority queue. I, was, I, I mean, this I, is a confusing question. I'm not sure we sorry. have to answer it. Well, maybe it's more important to focus, like Ian said, on the signals. OK. I mean, I. I I think it's good to know what signals are currently being transmitted and used. I agree. What I'm saying is that if you want to think about how a decision is made, which I I, I like to think about, it tells us exactly what you're chasing. Right. Like if you, if you know these are all the different pieces that are at play in play, and how would you prioritize across these different things? It's useful to actually just know how a center is making a decision. Um, the the model there to me is is the first one, which is a decision model rather than just the signal. Uh, so to answer Ian's question about what's being used, uh, there's not a priority uh, field or uh, um, anything like that. Uh, th they're basically uh, the media servers are intelligent. They're not simple relays. They're not simple distribution nodes. So they already have all of the signaling that went into that session. So they already know uh, all the requests from the client. They see all the subscriptions for all the streams, every every stream that was pinned, that was prioritized by the user, you know, in, in what order. So they already have all that information from uh, from the session, from the overall, you know, uh, conference. Uh, so then the sender's decision is then a simple one that it will never ever fill the pipe with more than the congestion controller says. So it, it, there is no there is no queue. So there's no need for priorities. Uh, as soon as the congestion controller uh, adapts, which is very quick because it's a delay-based congestion controller, it should adapt fast. I don't know if it's really, you know, it's obviously still causing some congestion sometimes, but that feedback signal is immediate. So the server will immediately then uh, stop sending those streams. It will stop sending those layers. Uh, it won't change the priority of anything else. It'll literally cut. So for our case, it'd be more like stop sending, not priority. Okay, so let me then let me ask you a, a question. Do you? I assume you have a model of the uh, subscribers, as, it, as we'll call it in this context, uh, buffer depth or something. Like on the server side, do you either do they communicate that to you explicitly, or do you just kind of like it's keep not, track of it? It's not communicated explicitly, but it's known. <laughs> you know, that it, it's okay. Okay, we, it's, you know, we we know by client, you know, fingerprint what every single client is, what the device is, what the user agent is. We we know what our apps are. And what our devices are, so we just know what our Webex I, I, I just, are. I was that was one of the things I was wondering yeah. about because I know, like, I think at least in some cases YouTube does communicate that. But part of it's because I think we don't trust that 
I don't know, it's one peer isn't lying or something to us. Um, okay, so so you do a calculation, I guess that um, in you want to slightly underfill the pipe. And so you do a calculation of like kind of like what is the highest quality I can get that will underfill the pipe. And so Reliably, this is very yes. right. And so this is not so dissimilar from to bring it back to what conversation, Scone Pro, where Scone Pro, like you know, you say like don't send media bit rate more than like X megabits, and then you're like, okay, my 720p is below X, I'll I'll send 720p. So it's it's similar to that. Okay, that's awesome. But yeah. obviously, there's nobody telling you what that is. It's a local congestion controller telling you. Sure. Yeah. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. A remote signal. But it, it, but it's more along the lines of like that type of ABR, um, and the word prioritization is. I can see what you're saying. It's not really prioritization, but it kind of is because you're trying to say like you have an objective function, I guess. And I'll just add that the, the congestion controller gets a lot of deep uh, congestion signals feedback from the from the subscribers. So it's it's you know more feedback than you would typically get in RTP. Uh, it's one you know one way delay and uh, very fine level feedback. Lucas. Yeah. So. Um two things one was like yes this idea that we might do um user agent sniffing say and and make a a validated decision based on past experiences of what works or what not without any other explicit on wire signal or at least one that the client didn't realize that we were factoring into our decision making process like that's an input we we do consider um mainly for the h2 stuff because it was broken with the new extensible one, the, the kind of jury's out, more data needed. Um, but another signal that we consider that isn't on the wire um, is effectively the class of customer that is using us. So, you know, it's fa it's fine for us to have service discrimination based on um, how much somebody is willing to pay. Um, you know, Alan touched on this in the chat with the market's going to dictate some things. Like, if you tell me I'm not allowed to, um, provide something that's not quite good enough because I'm giving it for free um, because an RFC said I can't do that, I'm going to ignore it. And I think potentially customers would too because they're getting a service, they're getting good value um, for something that's good enough. Luke? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to quickly answer um... One thing I did try sending the the jitter buffer size from the subscriber to the publisher for last mile delivery. I uh, couldn't make an ABR algorithm that used it. Uh, I would try, and it would actually just have a worse result than just rounding down to the nearest rendition based on the estimated bit rate. Uh, no, this was the the receiver would send the sender what the uh, their jitter buffer was in you know like what their maximum size. I have three seconds after that, like drop everything. And I did try to make an uh, an ABR algorithm based on how much time was remaining. Like, if the queue is a certain size, panic effectively on the sender side. It panicked too hard. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of experimentation needed. Uh, some signals make a lot of sense, like the jitter buffer size, totally. Um, I wasn't able to get it to work. That doesn't mean it can't work. But um, the simpler answer for me worked a lot better, at least for Twitch. Um, the latency was low enough, like two seconds target latency, that the jitter buffer size honestly didn't really matter. Yeah, um, we, we, we at Webex we did try um, something on the lines of each client telling uh, what's jitter buffer and and the server basically figuring out what what could be the max or min of the thing that we need to use and use that to make decisions. But at the end, it came uh, came to the point that the the, the server or sender whoever it is like was able to make a better decision without having that and also not having extra round trip and they, uh, and the the value add was not not that much so we, we didn't continue with the implementation of that anymore uh look i wanted to ask about the twitch example um so in terms of uh determining what to send and not kind of overfilling the pipe are you also doing were you also doing something that like is like calculating like okay this is the best quality i think i can get through consistently and so i'm not going to bother sending the next one or would you just like try to send the next one and then it would kind of fail and what we would do is we would have the um, the viewer send the list of all renditions they want, and they're the max bit rate for each rendition. And the server at every group boundary would look at your estimated bit rate and round down to the nearest rendition and use that. And we'd always deliver the newest group first. Um, 
uh, and it actually had a really good impact on the API algorithm. It was uh, our, uh, we served a megabit per second higher uh, than our the naive receiver side uh, ABR algorithm because we just pushed more data basically. Um, and buffering went way down, of course, because we're delivering, we weren't buffering, we're skipping data on purpose. Um, anyway, Geary's out, like there's a lot of different uh, approaches. Um, but for me, we wanted to get around the head of line blocking of HLS, which fundamentally just means we deliver what you can newest, newest please. Um, and I think to Victor's previous slide, like delivering older data makes sense, but you have less time to deliver the old data because it's only useful for another like 200 milliseconds. Whereas so you start delivering the newest iframe, yeah, it's like two seconds in the future, but it's going to be very useful and you have a lot of time to deliver it and you can account for congestion that way. Hold on a second. I'm just going to kind of try to come back. So I, I, as far as I understood, we, like, we didn't really talk so much about model other than model we don't want. Maybe it's like a decision, but I'm not sure that that's something that we can like, It'll, we might need to sort of punt on that. We haven't really, I mean, we've talked a little bit about inputs or like what are the useful signals that we can gather. So we sort of mentioned a few. I don't, I'm maybe hoping that they're coming into the notes. Um, Cause I've done, I, I've been trying to do that, but we haven't got to question number three as far as I'm concerned. That's sort of where I am also. So let me just, I'm going to just try to like move on to question three because it's one where I think what I've heard most of today is that there's general consensus that there's going to be a publisher signal and a subscriber signal. And, but is there anybody who thinks that there should only be one of, or the other or neither and wants to like say something about that? Well, <laughs> so uh, neither is not irrational. It should be a, an option on the table, but the question, I just, I, I think there should be both. I'll show slides later that show both, but, the, the one question, as soon as a client sends you anything, is how do you trust it? And what are the abilities to either DOS or game the system based on that number? So we should, in, in, in accepting any signal coming from a client, we should think about boundaries and, and protecting the delivery and other users and the server. Luke? Um, yeah, we definitely both, although I do want to have a caveat that viewer signals need to be deduplicated in some way. One of the problems with the jitter buffer size is one person might say one second, somebody else may say at eight seconds, what does the upstream do? What do you send all the way to the broadcaster? Do you send eight or do you send one? And the answer is unfortunately, usually it's one, you have to take the minimum. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, I hear a lot of consensus. So I wanna repeat Alan's questions. Anyone think we should not have both? Anyone just wanna stay in the queue to argue against both? Okay. Um, Actually, I'm, 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 yeah, basically. I'm going to argue oh, against go both. For it. Okay, so um, I think it's the DDoS stuff uh, and the, the the lying stuff that really pushes hard. So I'm not going to really argue against both. I'm going to argue against both everywhere. Um, what I'm going to argue is that the subscriber sender a signal, and I'm going to try and get us back on our terminology that we're using. Okay, <laughs> um, the the subscriber signal should only impact it because it's very hard to trust. So the subscriber signal should only go up to the first relay is what I'm going to argue. It shouldn't try to aggregate beyond that point in time because mm -hmm. every time we do that, we're filled with disaster. Does um, anyone disagree with that point? In subscriber, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. But thank you for getting me on my own terminology. Yeah. Uh, Christian, you, you were upset. <laughs> I, and let me just add one more part to this and then I'll go to Christian, sure. okay? Which is, but the um, original publisher signal, um, it has the relationship with the set of relays and everything else is trusted at a different level because it was allowed to publish in the first place. Uh, I, I think that that is one signal that can propagate across the whole tree to all of the relays that are somewhere downstream of it through any number of hops. Uh, and I think I should keep those two signals that way. That's the only thing that's good. Okay, Karen, you, you say in a blanket statement that uh, the, the subscriber signal shall not propagate beyond the first relay. And then the presentation you made this morning at the case of the relay in the home router, where there's exactly one subscriber and it might want to. Well, fair enough. I often say things I don't agree with myself. It's okay. <laughs> I, you could be right on that. Okay, are, are people in the queue to objective? The question I had, which was uh, what, what Colin proposed about filtering at the first relay. I, I is, would, any, is that, does anyone think that's a bad idea? I would say if there is one subscriber, you can go all the way to origin as well. If it's a one-to-one -one connection, I don't want to have this necessarily 
you know, if there's multiple deduplicating, if there's a conflict, use the publisher's intent. I think I think the question that's being answered is a different one. I want to, that's what I'm saying. I think that the question that's being answered here is whether these signals are end to end or are they hop by hop. Mm -hmm. If you actually treat the subscriber signal as hop by hop, every hop can make its own decision about whether to uh, move it upstream or not. Okay. And you can divorce those two questions. Okay. It's so, easier. so, so I, I think I think we're converging on a soft version of what Colin said, which is like forward beyond the first relay with care, with ex, with extreme caution, given the. De it's period hop by hop in both directions. And I, no, I, I, I think that the, the complication of aggregation and how can you aggregate or not. The three dot one is also bringing in some challenges, right? When when you're for, I, I agree with Luke's wording that makes things simpler. So I, I, I just, uh, to speak to uh, subscriptions, I hope we all agree with this. A single subscription is hop by hop. Yes. It, it like it's terminated like at that those two endpoints. So therefore it must anything about that subscription by itself has to be hop by hop. Now the data that is sent from the publisher to the end subscriber is inherently end to end. Um, as well as the like associated metadata uh, with that data. It's not unicast, but it's end-to-end. -end. It is end-to-end. -end. Well, so, that has to be true, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the relay, I guess, doesn't have any insight that would cause it to invert the priorities that the publisher is providing, right? It could, but that's up to the relay. Okay. <laughs> we, we have a problem is that it makes a lot of sense to have multiple publishers sending streams to a single Subscriber connection. There is nothing in the protocol that prevents that, and it actually makes a lot of sense. In that case, you will, the relay will have multiple tracks coming mm -hmm. from publishers. And I think Will was mentioning that this morning is that each publisher can do relative prioritization of the various track that it is publishing, but you cannot trust the relative you you yeah. cannot multiplex that across publishers yeah okay uh i'm gonna continue to struggle to like <laughs> come up with the formulation people could agree with so hop by hop in terms of like aggregating stuff particularly in the upstream direction like exercise extreme caution due to security concerns no, it's not just security cons concerns. It's also scalability concerns. Okay, because, sure. But the thing is, any aggregation function, uh, it, it, it's like, what is up if the like going back to Luke's point, right? If there's one subscriber, it does not matter. If for same track, multiple subscribers come and they all come with uh, various things. I think only thing we should say is that uh, follow the publisher signal. So, I don't see how this. So let me try to articulate this clearly. I think it is fundamentally hop by hop in both directions. Here's why. Um, if a relay has to make a decision, it is a hop by hop signal. If the relay is not doing anything at all, then it's an end-to-end -end signal. Now, if we are merging multiple uh, publisher streams at a relay, you've got a hop by hop decision to make there. Mm. If you've got multiple subscribers coming into a stream and that gets aggregated on the way back uh, upstream it's a hop by hop signal there so unless the relay is completely oblivious of the signaling it is hop by hop okay. uh, 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 i want to clarify terminology yeah it's described in around i think we we don't we, we just that's i don't i mean obviously i think when people said end to end let me just verify that i'm getting this right for you they that that meant the information flowed through hops hop by hop okay like let, let, let's get away from this hop by hop and end to end terminology i think it's going to kill us i mean so I, I think the question is is the publisher the signal from the publisher flows to every relay it goes through right so, so, so in the end yeah original publisher whatever information it puts in there flows yeah. every relay can act on that information yes. is one of the signals every relay gets yes yeah okay yes. and Calling that hop by hop or end by end is going to get confusing. Let's just be very specific. They can all they all get that information. I, yeah, I was going to say. I think about it is the signal from the original publisher is end to end, but the decisions are inherently hop by hop, just because that's how prioritization works. That's, that's okay. Okay. Uh, Lucas has been waiting for a while. Yeah. So like HP has a lot of this too. Um, although we might think about, for example, a, a frame coming in and being forwarded on. 
So a headers frame on H2 or H3 comes in and I'm going to forward that up to the origin because you know I'm, I'm a proxy in the middle. Um, it's not. It's the same frame, more or less, but I've consumed it and I've reconstituted something that's almost identical. Um, and I think that's fine. That, that makes sense. So to, like the example I could think of, uh, very different, but you know, uh, if a client sends us a uh, like X real IP header, we don't trust that. We we remove it and we add a new one based on the information that we have. And who whoever is upstream of us uh, maybe trusts us or not um, to have done that verification. Like that model is fine. I think it could be adopted here. Like we ignore it. I'm not talking about headers themselves, but the fact that. Um, things can consume stuff and add them and manipulate them. Um, if you don't want that, then you need to provide some better, like actual probable things in there because otherwise people will do it anyway. Victor and then Luke. Are you out in queue anymore? Okay, Victor, then Christian. Yeah, uh, I think I agree with Colin's proposals as like generally we will have data flow from Oh, okay. Things would only propagate from publisher, original publisher to end subscriber, and end subscriber can affect it, but it's only as help. And one thing I wanted to say is that uh, it's true, and sometimes in relays, you would even have to ignore what end subscriber says. So, for instance, if like I'm asking for a buffer size of five minutes, a relay can say, I, I don't even have that much RAM. Go, go away, 30 seconds it is. Uh... Christian and Mike. Yeah, I, I'm thinking again about is it a subscriber signal or publisher signal? I think that as far as MOQ is concerned, it's mostly a subscriber signal because <clears throat> what the publisher does is put information in the catalog. That information in the catalog is expressed whichever way the catalog is built, but is understood by the subscribers. Based on that, the subscribers will do things like, I want, that, I want to subscribe to this particular track. We let the subscriber choose which track they subscribe to. They're not subscribing to the set of track that is somehow passed to the relays. And so the, sus the subscriber is already making the decision to subscribe to particular tracks. It may want to only subscribe to the HD track in a simulcast thing because that's what they do. Okay, it's, it could do that. So de facto, the subscriber is deciding what it wants to receive. So it makes sense to have those signals be subscriber mostly because. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Mike then Suhas. Yeah, uh, so the main point uh, I wanted to make has already been somewhat made, which is that uh, some of the signals are end to end or propagate through the system further than others, but the decisioning is made locally, hop by hop, and made by the sender, right? So uh, we can say that the, the original publisher's intent should be propagated further through the system, um, even end to end, all the way down to the end subscriber. Um, but maybe we want to be more cautious about how we propagate signals from the end subscriber back up the chain. Um, yeah. Um, does anyone disagree that this is like advisory to the sender, and that there's ever like a mandatory requirement on the sender imposed by these? Uh, well, I, I think that the most successfully designed systems to be able to build things then that actually work in the real world are where when you ask for something that's not possible to do, you get a clear signal that that wasn't done, including that could be just closing your connection, right? But if you ask a relay to do something that's not going to do for you and it implies you're not it, like, that's all fine, right? That's, that's how you end up into very broken systems. I mean, we have, you know, countless examples of that. HTTP based systems are one of the worst defenders of that, but that's because they had to evolve from where they were into something more. Okay. So I, I think there's some level of that. Jesus, the piling up. All right. Um, uh, all right. Well, I, that was a cry that didn't work. So. Uh, 
relays have to do everything they're asked to do. Mike. You don't have a mic. <laughs> So I'm not, obviously a relay can decide whatever it's going to do yep. and not do whatever it doesn't want to do. But we have to be clear between what types of requests were an optional behavior, we don't care what the relay does, and which things are, I need an error if you're not going to do this or some sort of notification you're going to do it. You okay. really need those in systems. Okay. Right? Does, does anyone object to that statement? What Colin just said, like that, 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 that there are certain cases where there will be a priority request to a sender that sender will a relay typically that they will not fulfill it and there should be some explicit notification that it will not be fulfilled well, rather than just sort of silently ignored and this was particularly in the con specifically in the context of subscri in, in subscriber sorry yeah in subscribers making a request for something the relay was unwilling to provide with related to are these hands in opposition to that okay um do we need to talk about all of them then uh all right well I, let's let's just withdraw that point then and and like i mean I, it seems like that's doa so let's just table it sue haas and then mo um it's a lot of discussions here so i'm, I'm trying to yes a publisher when a broadcaster or publisher when it wants to publish it has an uh, intention of how its data has to be delivered so that's what it basically says. It 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 asks for like a conferencing application. It basically does. I want audio to go first, and when things go bad, and then the video, uh, and in that order. So the publisher needs to have some way to put in the objects that say what I would prefer this data to go through. And yes, definitely if, uh, for some of the use cases that we discussed today morning, where one client might decide uh, my audio of uh, Bob is more important than our uh, video of Alice, or another client might decide other other way, is definitely a client can influence. Going back, uh, so in that case, uh, the subscriber, basically the end subscriber telling the relay that uh, this is what I want, another end subscriber saying this is what he wants, that can be a valid request that can be sent to the relay. And again, if relay cannot, uh, support something, we need to either say um, whatever is in the data that's been from the publisher is honored, or we need to come up with a protocol error that a protocol mechanism say your request is totally not, uh, cannot be supported, so I'm, I'm going to drop it. We need to do, we need to write something about that when that happens. And, and, and I just want to stress on one of the points that uh, Christian was specifying it's so why it can be subscriber only. Yes, if the catalog and every application is uniform and everyone is uniform, the thing is uh, a publisher can publish the catalog and everyone follows the same thing. But more and more, we co collected the use cases. We have come, it's been very clear that the, each subscriber wants something different within the same application. So that makes us to think of a way to not only have a publisher say its intent, but also subscriber, per subscriber, end subscriber to control what this uh, exp experience is. More than Ian. I think it's uh, difficult to talk about this in a generic context about generic signals. I think answering the next question, granularity of the signals, may lead to better discussion about this because I think some people are thinking about, uh, you know, intertrack versus intratrack priorities, and clearly, priorities across the tracks, the subscriber may have some influence over them because, you know, different subscribers want different content. So there's, there, there's no way for for a single end publisher to prioritize the different tracks effectively. So I think we have a consensus that there are subscriber signals in this architecture. But also that the subscriber signals cover relative priority of track. I, 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 I would even, I'd be okay with constraining that subscribers can only signal relative priority of tracks only. You can only influence relative priority of tracks. Publisher, end publishers, uh, no, original, original publishers, <laughs> can only signal in, intra-track priorities and a hint, maybe even in, in, the, in, the, in the catalog, not necessarily, well, no, it has to be seen by the relays, so it can't be in the catalog. It can, it can give a hint for its base set of tracks, but there has to be some override across different sets of tracks. Like, we don't have a good name for a track set. I guess maybe namespace? No, different publishers can share the namespace. So we, we don't have a good word for that, but a track set, an audio and a, and, a, and a video ladder from one publisher versus an audio and video ladder from another publisher, okay. there must be a subscriber influence between those two. Okay, so I, show of hands, who disagrees with the idea that subscribers can only have inter-track priorities? Okay, uh, all right, so there were no consensus there. Let's move on. Um, who was next, Ian? Uh, yeah, I was actually gonna just, <clears throat> It seems like we're going to need subscriber and publisher uh, 
parties or input to this whole system, but I did want to like ask, like, what does the publisher really need to do? Like, what what can't I get from the subscriber? Like, I mean, this is not a generic like video playback app. Like, this is like Google Meet. This is like a relatively sophisticated JavaScript or thick client that like kind of knows what the heck it's doing, uh, presumably, right? It's it's not the video frame in Chrome. And so, what what information can that client not provide that the subscriber like needs to provide? That's Victor. Uh, I think the problem is that it it's not that it cannot provide. The two problems are one: different clients would provide different information, and that would be make it hard when you have like a relay to relay hop to make things work. And the second one is that you don't necessarily always want to trust your clients. What they want to You don't want to trust what they want? Who well, so you can trust them what they want, but you cannot trust it to make a decision okay. that's like on how you fetch it from upstream. All right. Okay. Luke? Yeah, I was going to quickly say one of the goals for mock is different latency budgets. So you can have different viewers have different priorities, right? I prefer newer, or I prefer older, or I prefer audio, I prefer this, whatever. So I do think last mile, that's an easy solution. Just listen to them. They know what's going on last mile, obviously. The hard part is figuring out what do you do with every other hop. If all the viewers agree, they all say, yeah, we all want newest, then sure, you could do that all the way upstream. But if they don't, then what do you do? Um, and the solution with send order was just let the publisher always choose, and it fixed one latency basic for everybody. Um, but I think we need a hybrid. We need a way of saying, like, okay, we'll do the best effort prioritization. Finally, to Cullen's point, like, there's going to be conflicts. Prioritization's the best effort. And if, for example, you want reliable in order, but the, the actual broadcaster wants to produce newest stuff first, then you're just going to be waiting for longer. So to, just to walk through a concrete example for my, like, what I'm thinking through. So the publisher might, for example, rank the resolutions as, you know, lowest resolution is highest priority. Yeah. And one reason to do that is to make sure that like we don't somehow like like through the relay chain, we don't end up sending like only the 4K version of the track and then like starve yeah. everything else because 4K is basically as large as every other thing below it. And like yeah, cause congestion to that and then yeah. Okay. But but I will say that one viewer might in the stream and all of a sudden now they want 4K over like everybody else's base layer. So you might have a viewer that actually wants 4K Whereas everybody else might want, you know, the lowest rendition instead. But but if you let the uh, publisher set the priority, that actually would work out because what would happen is they would try to upswitch to 4K. Their bandwidth would be crap because, like, all the way through the rest of the relay chain, like the lower qualities would still be being prioritized. And so the emergent behavior would be they just wouldn't get to switch to 4K if for some reason the cache fill hierarchy. Um, was congested. Okay, I think you've convinced me at least in that case. Yes, the sub the publisher has very very good reason to Ooh, want to. Just, okay, so we we at least for three. Okay, so publisher and subscriber both. So then we were talking a little bit about sort of well, I'll use hop by hop and end to end. We were talking about that. Sounds like there's not quite consensus there on exactly where that's going. I think we understand that. We think I can, we do I, can, I, can, I can articulate that and see if we can. Okay, I John opposed the question way. and everyone vote yes. So, I mean, everyone vote. Just on this one, I, I, I'd say that you want you want subscribers to also send signals because use cases, right? different use cases and different video. It's not all exactly one use case. And if you're watching cricket, for example, you can give me 340 resolution of you know 640 by 3, whatever it is, 320, and it's not going to be very useful because my ball is tiny. But that's that's you know that's it. That's a cricket problem. <laughs> <laughs> Switch to talk, basketball. Talk to, the, <laughs> talk, to the, talk to the fucking billion people who want to use this. But um, um, on the on the question of uh, uh, um, articulating hop by hop was end to end. I think what we had agreement on was that the signal can be end to end. In the subscriber case, the uh, the publisher to the subscriber is an end to end signal. Decisions are hop by hop are done at every hop. The subscriber signal is hop by hop, that you do not have to relay it, and you might actually not want to relay it uh, all the way to the publisher. OK. And yeah. everyone, did, do yeah, people? Cover that. Okay. Yeah. Just, just yes. And publisher signal flows 
um, across all the relays. Can someone mic him? That's the relay description. Original publisher. Thank you. Original publisher flows. Um, the in subscriber signal flows. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, but th this is this is where we seem to have some some sort of point, sir. Does it flow just to the first relay? Does it flow like like Luke said? Uh, it can flow beyond that as long as there's only one subscriber downstream of that. I, I sort of like that suggestion, but it doesn't flow up beyond that. We're not trying to figure out. It can. I Look, mean, I, I don't know what hop by hop means. Like somebody say exactly. Okay, so, doesn't propagate. Let's so, use so those let me, words, let me, not let me, hop by hop. Then. Maybe I can see what my hop yeah. by hop means. And sure. if people disagree, then that's fine. Hop by hop means that every hop has to write the signal again. Now, it could choose to read and write exactly the same signal, or it could read the signal, do a bunch of processing, write a completely different signal. Okay, okay so why don't you just, okay, so let's, let's describe that as this. The, so the in subscriber signals flows up to a relay. And that relay may write that signal or a completely different signal Correct. up screen. I think that's completely unwork. Okay, so I'm not let me capture the notes. Now I'm going to put myself in front of you. It's been expected. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to agree with that. No, that's <laughs> totally unworkable. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I think yes. I think it's safe to say we do not have consensus on um, the oblig on like the obligations incurred by receiving one of these things, uh, in particular, in relaying to other. Whether or not you have to like explicitly tell them that you're ignoring the signal, or whether in some cases you're required to forward a signal, um, that's just something I don't think we're going to work out this afternoon. Yeah, I, might, I, I, might, so I might propose something on, on, on one of those slides. Like, I want to dig into a little bit here. So, how many other people also have so, so share actually, Colin's me, concern? I, I wanted to be on the queue to comment on why I thought that was not a great idea. Uh, okay. I haven't gotten on the queue yet, so let me know when I'm on the queue. Oh, I okay. think Luke's ahead of Sorry, me. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, Martin was trying to like clear the whole discussion, but like, yeah, I, this is not chairing very well here. Let's 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 get it on topic. We're way off the topic of what's well, happening. No, wait, let's let's figure we're, out. We're right. We're somewhere in here. Yeah. Like okay. So we're, like okay. Um, we're we're definitely at number three. Uh, and Luke. Yeah. So my implementation is the relay forwards the first subscribe, and when it gets the second subscribe that conflicts, it updates the subscription upstream to say publisher chooses. Now, to Cullen's point, we could have a message that tells them explicitly, by the way, I saw your subscribe and I use different settings. Like, you wanted to deliver things oldest first? I'm actually going to deliver sometimes things oldest first because it, it's, it's a hop by hop decision, right? Like, the final hop will still be newest first, but earlier hops might be oldest first. So you could explicitly say it, but it's still, it's prioritization. It's best effort in the first place. So clients kind of have to expect the, their signal to be ignored. I not that some hops, right, is part of the problem. It's last mile is still going to be exactly what you said, but first mile could be something else. Okay, Victor. Oh, sorry, sir. So we'll get you next. I think we have. I thought we had a viable proposal, and I'm not sure what happened to it. Uh, like, <laughs> on an individual hop, what I think what should happen is, first, if there is a subscriber specifies something on that hop, so what subscriber asks should be followed. If it does not, then whatever, whatever that came from publisher. And in terms of how information propagates, since MLQ is one to many fan out from Publish original publisher to end subscriber, it can only propagate from publisher to subscriber because the other direction just does not work. There is. Hmm? Does this get in line, get in line. make sense? Okay. So, okay. See is next. Unless you're, you're done, Victor? Okay. okay. Um, I, I lost the context, but I, I, I agree with one, one thing. Uh, the, again, we always looking going back to Cullen's slides on where can things go wrong. No matter what a subscriber say, if if the first hop is congested, a uh, publisher wants some guarantees on what um, needs to get can you till. Put me on there somewhere. Yes, true. You should go oh, after. No, you can, can go in front of me. Cullen, you can go in front of me. Too late already, right? 
<laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I was just trying, trying to say is that like uh, yes, if everything goes fine, um, if all the uh, data that publisher is publishing it's coming through the the last point relay and each subscriber has a different ex because of their experience needs uh, request something different in different order yes they'll get get through it uh, regardless of what uh, the order the publisher stand but we, we should always also think about like if the publisher has a first mile congestion or something goes wrong in there then definitely at the end the publisher wants an experience that a broadcaster wants an experience that he wants to give to the subscribers uh, he does not know how far the subscribers are, where they are, but he wants, if in worst case, if nothing goes through, my audio should go through. So that's where the publisher is basically saying, this is my priority. Please do your best effort to get through the relay system. And at the end, yes, in, 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 even in WebEx, we have a lot of use cases where you can change the layouts, where some become small, some becomes big. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to solve that one, and that is per subscriber decision. And we usually ad, uh, apply that to the the. In, in our case, it's the SFU, or in this case, it would be the last mile relay. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I had one, one comment, that, which is I don't, I don't think I understand. Um, yeah, I don't think I understand what a relay would do with a client-driven, like end subscriber uh, priority, like up the chain. Like it seems like, like as a person who runs like a proxy in front of a proxy in front of a proxy like there's no way i'm like relaying your client driven priority to like my l3 load balancer you must be nuts um i have no idea what, what we'll do but i'm pretty sure request bundling in, is involved um and, but the um the other thing i was going to say is i i know prioritization there's some amount of like server's going to do what the server's going to do but if if one hop starts sending like oldest first and the other one starts sending newest first and you like go through a few of those, like I have no idea what's gonna happen, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be bad. So like, I think we should at least make that one, you, like, I don't know how we're gonna enforce it, but like, I think we really wanna make sure like those sorts of things like line up to the system. So like, if you want. Let's uh, get back to, I really wanted to hear what Colin, yeah. Colin's objection about the may or may not send upstream. So, I mean, I was going down the, this, you know, same path of where Ian was, if there's just something sort of, I mean, like what Luke proposed up to the first point made total sense to me. And, and even the, the possible what he said of, of all the way unless it changes. But as soon as you start having things that may or may not propagate upstream, you now have no idea what's happened to your priorities anywhere. You don't know that the downstream, sorry, you don't know that the publisher's priorities applied. You don't know where the subscribers publishers providers are and you can't reason at all about what the system's going to do it's going to it's that system is going to perform much worse than a simpler system where you understood what was going on right because you won't have conflicting priorities scattered across your whole network and i, and I find this whole discussion is like everyone's sort of coming around to this you know will's got a solution that is pretty much i think roughly the same as victor's solution which is only like half an inch from what luke's proposing it is a solution that would totally work for us, or for me anyway, as far as I understand it. And like, we're just sort of like circling the drain here on on, on this stuff. So I, um, yeah, you know. I, so first there was a remark that we don't have a channel for the uh, information to propagate back from the subscriber to the uh, upstreams. Well, that's what the subscribe parameters are for. Or, or, the, or the subscribe update or, or things like that, which is exactly something you do because the, the client subscribes to the relay. And if we don't do anything in particular, the relay appears to the subscriber as just another client. So if we look at that, I mean, we have kind of a complete symmetry is that as far as the, the publisher is concerned, the relay is just a client. As far as the subscriber is concerned, the relay is just a publisher. So we we can only go so far now. Okay, the, the system, the architecture we have is symmetric. Yeah, I was more arguing that I wouldn't propagate the original priority like up the chain. That's what I was arguing. Well, I think the the, the the difference, Christian, is that the uh, relays have aggregation; they they have fan out for many subscribers. So I think it doesn't help to talk about these these general terms. I think taking a specific use case that clearly hits all the all the points. You have two subscribers that want different track priorities, talking 
through uh, two different relays to an uh, original publisher that's publishing both b- both of those and it be it'll be very obvious that some things are going to conflict and can't be you know can't be uh enforced by the relay in, in any way if we take a concrete example like that and run through it i think we'll get a lot more traction because it also answers for the granularity of the signal we're we talking about track priorities or object priorities uh, here's a modest proposal and if this is a terrible idea like please shot me down mo do you want to create a can- canonical model for this for tomorrow that you can present in like 15 minutes or less i think i can do it now and sitting in the room on <laughs> slides that everybody wants to present exactly. okay all right martin i think right. i think okay. i think okay. this is... so suhas you're you're okay. the end here so I, I think i uh i'll repeat again i think i repeated this like four times since the afternoon we need to let Cullen and Will present proposals. Okay. Uh, having said that, we always say it's publisher and subscriber. Sorry, a relay is slightly more. It does subscri- subs- uh, aggregation of subscriptions. That's where the complication comes. When you aggregate subscribes, you cannot aggregate all the signals. Some like when uh, you cannot, uh, I'll give an example where this can really fail, right? Where a client comes and asks for oldest first, and a subscribe goes all the way, and everything comes oldest first. Second clients comes and ask for newest first. Okay, I do an upgrade, uh, update upstream. Now we'll get the newest first. Wow. So the first client is thinking like, thing my total order yeah. changed all of a sudden. And next, the third client comes, I says, I want newest, oldest first again. You go and upgrade. Yeah, so every time each client have a terrible experience, and more and more signals we add that uh, is closed. that is per subscriber. Uh, it it just makes makes the aggregation much more complicated I, I i would say a relay or the first mile relay is, uh would should be something which is doing the aggregation function should basically uh is is that subscribers experience so it should limit the signals right there and not aggregate upstream and instead um if there's a conflicting signals it'll get whatever the publisher sent and for each subscriber it, it based on his cues it sends in the order the subscriber asked for okay so the queue is closed. I, I think I'm going to just repeat what I said like five, ten minutes ago, which is that I think we have consensus that that the answer to this question is both, and we have no consensus on the obligations that these priority signals contain. And we just sort of reiterated that 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 lack of consensus over the last five to ten minutes. I also the lack of consensus is is what exactly obligations a priority signal imposes so, on you. Martin, no, Martin, Martin, I, I don't. We didn't discuss. We didn't can discuss I, can that I, at all. Can I can I say something here? So I, I think it's too early to decide we have a consensus or not. Well, because we don't. I, I'm saying we don't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, even, even that, because I haven't heard anything that that gives me a proper idea of what is the solution could be. I mean, I think so it would be. Yes, no, 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 that, that, that part that's, that's have, fine. I, as I said, that is true. Hope by hope but, thing, but, I think. But, we have consensus on three How are conflicting signals merged? No one has said merge them. Everyone has said they can't be merged. They're conflicting. Well, no, no, we, we don't, well, no, I've heard people say that um, they, they must be forwarded under certain circumstances. I've heard people say... By definition, you can't merge the conflicting signals, right? Well, I, I, I don't think, I think we're over-indexing on the word merged, but the point is when you get, when you get a signal from, for instance, a subscriber, like, does the relay have to do anything? Does the, does it have to forward something? Does it have to acknowledge it in some way or reject it explicitly? Yes, Christian. I think that my I, I'm hearing this uh, question of I mean we have one thing which is clear which is a delivery order. I'm sorry. And one thing which is clear is having the subscriber state to the relay. Yes, it's yes. order of preference. That part we have achieved consensus on. I I think where we're no. So and, I would. And I would... If, I, I, I don't, we haven't discussed that, and I don't know what that means on the delivery order, and wait, I do wait, not wait, think it is a wait, thing wait, that we have agreement I, I'm sorry, on. I'm sorry, you object to subscribers sending priority messages to relays. He said delivery order. Oh, I'm, pardon I'm me. sorry, okay. my, my tongue okay. fucked. My tongue slipped. I mean, I'm sorry. All right. I think a delivery order is where they send the earliest first. Okay, yeah, no, the older, no, he I, withdraws yeah, okay. the point. I, I, I meant priority. Okay. 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 The, okay. I do want to highlight. The other thing, I, the thing I'm hearing is that we want to move on to the priority things, and like it seems like what I'm what I'm suggesting is that I think this particular question of like what you have to do or don't have to do when you receive a priority message, that we take it to the chat, we take it to email, we take it to dinner, and we move on. No, that's yes. why we came to and, this and meeting. Then the next question is, okay. is okay. Say, all right. if we have conflicting requirements, and the, the, the typical conflict is client A wants its 
older first, client B wants it younger first. Then the relay cannot really aggregate that because they are conflicting. And the option for the relay is to do two different subscribe to the publisher. That's all. Okay. I want to. I, I do want to highlight real quick, though, I, the, the, I, I wanna, problem I wanna, with the priorities is also with the mode for object mode forwarding as well. If, if we have the same exact issue, so whatever the solution is for pri uh, priorities and who sends it and how you do merges needs to be addressed also for the transport or for the actual object forwarding mode. Can I propose, object forwarding. Can I propose okay. a way forward? Uh, I was going to propose one, but if you... But you have the chair, you okay. can do it. Um, I think my proposal was, uh, I've heard people want to present their solutions. Yeah. So um, I was optimistic that if we, that I thought that maybe having concrete, we'll, we'll see if having a concrete proposal makes it easier or not than having agreement on general principles, um, which we don't. Um, the three questions we didn't talk about, two of them are yes or no. So I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask, do you think, mm, I'm going to ask this two different ways. I'm going to split five and two. Raise your hand if you think, Publisher can change priorities over the life of a track. Not for an already published object. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, Let me. Can you change condition. the? Can the publisher change a priority of a published object? Already published object. Yes. What if somebody asks for it again later? Yeah. To okay. So most people seem to think no. Um, can a subscriber change the priority of a request? Yes. Raise your hand. Yes. If you can, you've requested something, you can change it. Okay. Anyone lying down on the road for no? How you guys the people on? By the way, I, I, I didn't catch any of those. <laughs> so it just occurred to me that's really important. So my apologies. In any case, I mean, the subscriber can cancel a subscribe and set up a new one. Okay. So of course it can change the priorities. Okay, I, that's fine. We're just trying to establish what people think here. So um, uh, people feel free to um, plus one in the in the chat, and we'll yeah, try to capture those. Hands. Or or yeah, raise your hand and meet. Okay. So uh, what I have heard is that people think a, once the publisher sets a publisher priority on an object, it cannot ever change it. It seems like people seem to think that's true. Uh, a subscriber, if it asks for some kind of priority, is welcome to change it either by canceling the subscription and issuing a new one, or potentially by subscribe update. But that is not permanent. So it sounds like five. There's at least in the room general consensus that that is how priorities can change uh, over time. And okay, Victor wants to object about one of those things. No, it's, 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 there okay. is, there is a bit of weird sentences that presupposes that every individual object has priority. Uh, we skipped over granularity, so we just have okay. to live with that. Because <laughs> it, it wasn't a yes or no question that you could raise a hand to. Um, OK, so uh, raise your hand if you think that the signals should be extensible. And by extensible, I'm thinking of RFC 9218, where the RFC defines a couple parameters. And you're free to define more and experiment with them if you feel like there would be more signal in that. Do people want that kind of what you're raising? Yes. How would you prevent that? Yeah. Sorry, I mean that not well, right now, we don't have any fields that you can convey them in. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm asking you now. Raise your hand if you think they should be extensible. Looks Just like a second. No, 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 no. Let, no, let me rephrase a question that might be a little bit different. Um, whether the base spec should have a flexible flexible mechanism for loading a variety of type of expensable mechanisms into it, I think is what you were getting at. And then a different question is, could future specs extend this one? I mean, you, you can't stop that. The answer is yeah. obviously yes to that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, like, who was it was talking about the other day? Web EBPF? Who was some? Victor, <laughs> Web EBPF. I, should this have Web EBPF? <laughs> Lucas? Uh, so, the extensible priority scheme, RFC 9218, is effectively made extensible because we chose to limit the scope uh, more than some people would like. So, for example, having only eight urgency levels, that wasn't acceptable to some people. Uh, but what we said is the, the extension mechanism could extend that model. So, for example, you could add another um, flag that could effectively extend that urgency range in another dimension. So you convert eight into 100 and 
5,000 in some way or the other, um, which seemed to appease most people. Um, but the extension wasn't like, oh, uh, we can completely uh, change the meaning of these things entirely. Uh, and and we, the reason we chose that is because that I think that's getting into the territory of, well, this is impossible to rationalize about now because this, this is just a header and it's a string in a field and anyone could set some flag and it works on their own private deployment and it doesn't work elsewhere um, and maybe it's breaking stuff. So I think the should things be extensible really depends on the scope of, of what we're trying to define in the first place and that maybe it's the escape valve to let us make some progress in the short term because we can say to people look you have the means to be able to go and fiddle around and and go on do that and you write your extension in your own time um and see and as somebody who's gone and written two different extensions that nobody seems interested in <laughs> yet um you know i think i wouldn't i I wouldn't invest much effort into the extension scheme unless there's people who say they really want to because it's just going to be a waste of time and it'll be something that ends up not being used and ossified. Yeah. All right. I, I think I know there's people who may want to respond, but I think I'm just going to say like, I was just trying to get a quick read on this before we moved on and I have the quick read, which is that it's a bigger topic and there's not strong consensus right now. One way or the other. <laughs> okay. All right. Who's, who's first? Who wants to go first? Here? Jump up and down if you're presenting priorities. Okay, Will, go. You're the man. How much time are we giving him? I don't know. How much time do you need, Will? Here's my suggestions. Why don't we only do clarifying questions on understanding Will's thing, not pros and cons of whether this is the right one? See them all, and then we can go debate pros and cons over beer or something like that. I think that sounds like a lovely sound? idea. Okay. Yeah. okay. Why don't I have to be friendly to Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be friendly. He deserves <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, Do people need another break before we start? Do we want another five minute bathroom break? Okay, we're going to take five minutes while Will gathers his thoughts and slides. Uh, and we will resume at 3.39. Please do not be late. So, Will, um, Will said he needed about fifteen. I, I, I think I'll cut him off if we're getting past like twenty-five or so. Um, can, I, I don't know who who is the presentation. You have one. Is there another one out there? It's just the two. Victor, do you have one? Okay. So, well, I mean, all right, want, let's allocate. You do on the whiteboard or don't, like, no, not, probably not today. Okay. Probably. I don't see anyone going to the bathroom, so I'm not sure what to do with this here. But um, I'll give you both a half hour, then we could be done by about 4 30. Yeah. Great. Excellent. So let me quickly respond at this point for 20 more minutes. So I, I just don't like people who are defending and talking about what's the proposal about. I mean, yeah, there is a proposal. What's the problem they're solving with the proposal? Because we have a number of them, like the mission three actually erupted and lots of different events. Yeah, I'm not super optimistic on how this is going to go because I'm giving the amazing a lot of it's during the lunch, so you have so much energy. Amazon gave a free banana on the street. They have a What's that? Amazon has a truck where they load bananas every morning. Where they go through where they get Maybe I should take some notes just to eat some chocolate. 
<laughs> Mike's not sharing. It's almost like that's why you do it. Yes. <laughs> like, I think uh, I'll go over to the uh, most for this one. Uh, until now, you should get two, two chocolates. Yeah. I never took notes in, in school. So I'm so like, it's the most terrifying thing taking notes for this. I don't know. I zone out like so badly. The best ones, like I, I kind of cut my teeth taking the notes for Sad CDN or Scone because I'm like, I'm well versed in everything they're talking about, but I don't really have anything to say. And so like, I can like understand the points that people are, because you go somewhere and like a random group, you're like, I could try to like write down what you're saying, but I'm not sure I get it. Or other places where I want to get up and talk and then it's really distracting. I used to see more than blockchain that makes coding pull back. There you go. <laughs> yeah, while you guys were arguing about it, I finished it. So, yeah. <laughs> Here, let me show the code. It's worthless. It doesn't work. I'm actually, so your, your relay is open source, right? Yeah. And Suos, is your relay open source? Let me check. Let me check the new <laughs> <laughs> I thought like we made everything open source, but. Uh, I mean, the reason I ask is just because I think it, I think just some people speak better in code. It might be able to go read somebody else's relay implementation if you want to know what they think MOQ is all about. I mean, I made the mistake of doing the so I'm really sorry. Stuff is not easy to read. <laughs> Easier to write, not really easy to read. I'm like reinventing like oh, inventing new synchronization primitives and stuff like that. AC Brup is an experiment. Give me an open agenda tomorrow. I think. Yeah, we've got lots of time to work this out. Um, I'd like to propose a consensus that like, MOQ stands for media real quick and see how many people yell at me. <laughs> okay, it is 3.39. Uh, let us begin. We want our priority solutions. <laughs> Don't call it that. It's Alan. What? Sorry. Alan's chat is not an approved name. That's not Alan but approved. It's, 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 I don't, I don't it's think it's on all my stuff. Did we adopt Mock Chat? It's Mock Chat. We adopted it. What do you mean? We oh, do we adopt that draft? It doesn't need to be a draft. It's the only RSC we're going to produce. It's Alan's chat, right? No, no. Why do people call it that? It's not like they call it Jonah's quick. Like, we, 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 should, we should reject all the other drafts, just publish that as their only RSC. Yeah. <laughs> they already have one. It's called Mimi. I'm just debugging the. Mimi applicable here? Colin thinks this is better. Yeah. Than Mimi. I don't pay much attention. Mimi scares me because it's like. Supposedly a high volume <laughs> like messaging system designed by everyone except the people who run high volume. <laughs> okay, we've reached critical mass. Let's start. I need a point of view because you don't know what it says. I look at the computer loss rate 90%. We're beginning. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you it's at 545. Make your own, make your own judgment. <laughs> it's at I love sushi. I love sushi. 
They serve hamburgers. <laughs> okay. Can we start talking, Will? Yeah, okay. We're going to get going. So here's a proposal for how prior priorities might work. The scope of this, we're looking at a connection. We've decided we can prioritize within a connection, but not between connections. So between connections would probably be fair shared. We're looking inside a connection. I have the original publisher. It's not the proper name. This is the intent. It's the original publisher on the left. I have a relay and I have my end uh, subscriber, as I should term it, on the right. The publisher decides to publish a track. It's called C, and it's a sequence of objects or groups. We can debate the granularity later. And this publisher, because it, it knows what this is, it says, I want this track to have a priority of one, where one means highest priority in this model. In addition, there's a second signal, which is the send priority in each object, which is something that's already part of our draft and is supported by a web transport as well. In this case, just for illustration, it said equal send priority to every object that's coming out. It publishes a second track, which the publisher says is lower priority at track B. And in this case, it's used a range of send uh, object send priorities that uh, increment. Wait, so clarifying question, yep. lower is better or higher is better? Uh, yeah, it's a bit confusing here, but on the priority side, one is better, higher priority. Okay. And on the other number, it's following what our draft says, which is that bigger numbers are better. So they're, they're inverse. We can correct that later, right? If we want smaller numbers. Okay. I, I, I guess. I, 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 so this is high, that, medium, low. Exactly. And, and that's low, high, higher, and low, higher. lower, right? And the important. Okay, so, so, so the, so the yeah. ordinality of the, tr of the tracks versus the groups is it's a reverse. We've got two. The ordinality okay. is reversed. Opposite. Got it. Okay. It's, that's super. Grasp that concept. This is how our spec is. Christian said this morning he likes priority one should be higher than priority nine. So, right. yeah, it's it's inverted here, but it's still workable. Okay. So these are this is what the publisher publishes right now. The end client sees this and it says, you know what? I'm subscribing to track A, but I want it to be my highest priority. And we had some consensus earlier that it's okay for a subscriber to to express its priority. Uh, and and in fact, just for purposes of illustration, chooses the exact inverted scheme that the publisher suggested. Um, now, this is the, the stage. Now we move, I've stored it here so you can reference it. Now we bring ourselves to a core question. I have a relay and I have a congested send buffer. And this, this buffer is an application buffer, right? We haven't written these to the wire, so we can change how we drain this buffer. This is the head, these objects arrived first. This is the tail, they arrived last. And you can see I've got between the three tracks, various objects in here. But now we can apply some rules, right? So our first rule is that we're going to follow the send order, which is this number in here, where it's it's within the scope of a namespace, so it's consistent. So 59 is higher than 52. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that 59 is higher than 9, because 9 is in a separate track. And this subscriber, so the first thing the relay does is it honors the subscriber's request. So this subscriber says track A has the highest priority. So it's going to pick a dark blue object, and it's going to pick the dark blue object with the highest send order, which is 8 in its buffer, right? That's one client. Imagine we have another client which has send order, but it said my, subs my priorities are equal, okay? I don't, I don't have a preference. In this case, it's going to choose eight again because the subscribe priorities oh wait hold on is that right <laughs> yeah i messed up my model anyway send order with equal subscribes then i'm going to honor the public oh no this is right sorry I got wrong. this should be one yeah this eight excuse that send order with no client priority preference should be one as well because it honors what the publisher has sent. And if neither the client nor the publisher expresses a preference, then we're going to drain our FIFO queue. So we're just going to take the object at the head and start draining it. And we keep applying this model. Oops, 
and we basically get this, which is depending on our combination of the client signal and the publisher signal and the send objects, we can drain this queue in four different ways, meeting hopefully the application requirement. Yeah. Mike. Sorry, Mike. Clarification <laughs> question. Um, uh, oh. Why is it 876 instead of 678? Because it's, okay, and this is something we need to solve because it said one is my highest priority. So it's going to send all the, all the track A's that it has. It's yep. The client says, I'm going to send all my track A's. Then I'm going to send all my track B's. Then I'm going to send you all my track C's to this client, right? Another right. client could have inverted that, but they would get what they asked for. But I thought six was a lower. There's two different, There's two different priority schemes. Oh. You have to juggle oh. that in your head. The, yeah, these are these numbers okay. are higher, which is how our draft is. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, clarification question, Will. Yeah. So the, the, the third one uh, is a case where uh, the subscriber did not, uh, the end subscriber did not ask in, ask a particular order. Yes. So you follow publisher. I order. follow the publisher, publisher in this order. case. So it's in all the, all the C's, then all the B's, and then all the A's. Got it. And another thing is that, like, just as a, a point of note in the draft, the draft does not say uh, new group center means most important. It does not say anything there. I just, just wanted to say we, because that the section that you're referring to is okay so perhaps i misinterpreted okay, it sure. so we should we should decide and clarify that uh well i don't understand what you mean by uh relay here is it an entire relay network or is it one single relay this is a hop i'm going to go my next slide is how these relays interact and the exact issues we were discussing early on aggregation okay, okay. so, this so relay we're is not just doing... looking at a hop so okay. this relay has nothing to signal upstream there's one publisher oh, one one sub subscribe yeah not yet next slide i'll get to that luke yeah so clarifying question yeah um the group send order is scoped to a group you said namespace but it looks like this is 50 59 is relative to group track b only so we, sh we should debate this i think it should be track b only yeah. the trouble is you might as a publisher want to dictate that your 59s are intentionally higher priority than your nines and eights and sevens. For example, I could put my audio starting at 10,000 and my video starting at one. And if I gave no track priority and this, and this was scoped to the namespace, then a relay would send all my audio before my video. So that's an option for us. It, part of the trouble is the subscriber has difficulty expressing how to interleave tracks. Um, uh, clarifying only. Yeah, clarifying only. Um, and also these ones, they're all priority one, um, which is, are they sent in random order? Or like, no, they, is that just a bad they, example? They're set, that's a temporal order. That's how the encoder is producing them and, and sending them. They don't, it doesn't, for, it's a use case to illustrate you don't have to, attach so for um, track c is it arbitrary order because track a and b are very clear i'm delivering yes. ascending or descending track c is track an example is... of something where the publisher has not expressed a send order okay and which i think is possible what should be the default then like well it's either absent completely or it's a, they're all the same and i think you sort of get to the same it doesn't whether it's missing or they're all the same you have the same action by the relay, which is I don't prioritize one over the other. Yeah, just pick a default is what I'm saying. Okay, like, don't call randomize it. Call it, it default. Yeah. Call it or call it zero, or we come up with some coding scheme for I'm not expressing a preference. Yeah. Another clarifying question. Yeah. These are group priorities. Do you have something later that's going to talk about object priorities? No, so that's the, the question, right? Objects are our atomic unit that moves across the wire, right? So in the end of the day, objects have to carry the signal. But the signal can be applied to groups, which are virtual constructs. So the, the quest, my question would be, do you want to have differing send priorities within a group? I thought that was one of Colin's, that was 12 that we talked about for so long on the requirements today. <laughs> we talked about it like 10 minutes. <laughs> Requirement 12. Yeah, Requirement what I would do is put my iframes on a different track and my my P's and B's on a different track. And then I would set my iframes at my highest priority and I would get that track. And I wouldn't have this complexity of trying to juggle send order, a differing send order within groups. But then you have to juggle the complexity of, of 
Re Boxing and I, I, I do, uh, right? Only. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. No, I, I, I think I it's a question. When you're, when there's no mic, this is going to be hard. When you're, <laughs> that looks so uncomfortable. It says there's no priority specified by client or, or by publisher or subscriber. Yeah. But does the send order not count as a priority? Why didn't 59 go before 58? No, well, that's because it doesn't exist. In, the, ah. in that case, there is no You're saying that send these order. Are just They're just, oh, I'm just numbers so that you can know that I'm draining it in the order I received it, which I think would be, the, okay. again, the default behavior Thanks. by that's a just a slide. That's just a slide. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other Okay, ready for next so, slide? Yeah, so let's go to next slide. So let's, how do these interact? So this model on the left, I've got my original publisher. It's going through two relays, and then there I've got uh, four different end subscribers. So my end subscriber, and this is a slightly different model. It's just got two tracks, right? And it can say A is more important than B, or B is more important than A. Yeah. So this subscriber says, I'm subscribing, and A is more important than B. This one says, I'm subscribing, B is more important than A. This one says A is equally important to B, and this one says I have no preference. And there's a difference between I want equality versus I have no preference. So what does this relay do? We just had a long debate about what this relay should do. I believe this relay has to go forward with no preference. Uh, it, it could, in the case there was only one subscriber, go forward with that subscriber's preference, and then as more subscribers come, it would have to update that subscription. That's entirely possible, okay? But given the range that we see here, the only fair thing it can do is go forward with no preference. It'll go forward with no preference. Now, the publisher starts to publish. This publisher wants A to be more important than B, and it puts that in the subscribe OK message. That subscribe OK will get reflected up. So this is the signal from the original publisher that's robust across all the hops. So for this hop, A would be greater than B for priority. Same for this hop, because in this case, the subscribers both said I have no preference, so we honor the original publisher preference. At this relay, which is fanning out, we now hear A is greater than B because that's what the subscriber asked for. Here, B is greater than A. It's the inverse of this, but this is what you get because you asked for it. Here, A equals B, and here, since no pref, we honor the original publisher, and we give A greater than B. Okay, I see three clarifying yeah. questions. I didn't see the order they went up. Yeah, just to clarify, this would also be in track info, not just subscribe, okay? Yes. I see four now. Okay, let's just go around. Who else? Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea, but I'm not sure if should if should be if the publisher's intent of A is greater than B should be in, in any of the um, subscribe, okay, or control messages because Publisher's intent will be communicated in the catalog. And second thing is that it will be carried in the object. So I don't think so we need to have. But other than that. No, it's not carried in an object. We can't carry relative preferences in an object. You can't. Okay. Yeah. So you. And in the, fact, these okay. you don't carry A greater than B. You carry a priority number. Okay. And that number, and that can be and that number reflects that. It, A is greater than B. You don't put. That's how you put the numbers. The right? only one that you do A, B is someone who's received two numbers and then they rank them. Okay, can, we don't put a matrix of can, what. Can you explain the order in this? Because I, I, did, I didn't understand. The subscribe OKs are, are held off until you get the prior, until you get the first original publisher subscribe OK? I thought we agreed that subscribe OKs are come immediately. You don't have to wait for the original publisher to, to, to send your subscribe OK. The, each relay would ind independently do subscribe OK without going all the way to P1, right? I, and not in my model, no. I don't see how you can do that. Didn't we have didn't we have consensus no, on that? Before? I thought that yeah. you you go back to I thought we had consensus. You go back to P1 and uh you you basically you don't do subscribe okay until you know what the 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 latest group is and then you go back to your subscriber. If you don't have the object if, if you have the live stream you go back right okay. away. Let's not let's not real let's not talk if there's no consensus there we'll come back to it but it's not relevant to this Yeah, it's a bit of that's a side track. It's a good point well, but well, it's a side track. I, I was trying to understand how yeah. the information came over. How, how did C1 through four get that a over get that a is greater than b signal they they no this signal that a is greater than b they get as well right they no, get but, that. but will in most world r2 has already sent the subscribe okay yeah. before p1 ever gets the subscribe okay then it's got to be in the track hitter where did luke say it should be i'm saying this is 100 like whatever right in most world it's in something that's persistent for the track okay yeah okay maybe well, subscribe okay was a bad suggestion um, 
So the two clarifying questions here, first of all, like, first of all, I mean, we sort of, I, I'm taking the A greater than B on this slide as, as a, like a, a euphemism it's that it made one of, the tracks, convenience. one of the tracks had nine and one of the tracks yes, had eight. And whether it was a track, is. a group or an object, that's a sub yep. issue we'll de debate or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So the, my, my question no, it's, is, that's not debatable. This is a track, relative track priority. The send order is whether it's group or object, but the track priority is for everything in that track. Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, the... Okay, so I, I, I guess I don't understand. So on the, the my clarifying question was on the A equals B, um, when they're equal, what do you, what do you I, I think I know what your answer is going to be. You what do you expect e to happen? Equal yeah. weight here. This, this link is going to give preference to A over B. This link is going to give equal preference A and B. Does that There's mean they would get, roughly speaking, equal bandwidth type? Like, uh, like, like they're, they're going the to be sending two, both yes, of them? Or does it, would, I, I was trying to get at whether does it means they're sending them both equally, or it's just defaulting to some other thing like send order. To they're decide sending what to them decide. both equally because here it's sending A with higher priority. And we okay. need to decide if the priority is like a binary one, you're absolutely higher until I have no more of you, or it's a weighted priority. I want you to send four times as much of this as this, but I still want a little bit of this other thing. That's important, and it's not expressed in this slide. Yeah, and I'm a weighted fan. Just uh, I, I just to clarify on this one, it's there'll be two subscriptions sent by C1, C2, and C3, C4 because subscription is per track. C, uh, C1 subscribes to track one, and C1 subscribes to uh, track A. No, track they're B. both subscribing to track A and track B. There's no way to do that today. Your subs subscription is per track. It, I think there's two different tracks. Yeah. I mean, imagine each, each track of these subscribers. Each, subscribe. each of these subscriber is subscribing to two tracks. Two, two, two messages, two separate messages. Yeah. Per, per C1, C2, C3, and C4, they send two subscribers, one yes. for track A and track yes. B. Yes. Somehow they say for track A, I want this priority and track D. Yes. But when the P1 comes, there's no one subscriber okay, that, that can look around all the subscriptions that came and say, OK, you, you requested in this order, but this is my order. So I, I think we are trying to find a solution. The, I'm wrong on this solution right now. But overall, I agree with the flow. OK. Yeah. But where the do only we do? signal that sees here is this no prep, right? John, that's that's all it gets. OK, clarify away. Uh, well, no, I'm asking the question. We'll get that. Okay. Um, does, there is no notion of timing in this thing, is there? Correct. In the sense that? Not yet. As we, long as you have, if you do strict priorities and you've got a whole bunch of video data queued up, you're going to get all the video data before you start getting any audio, for example. If, assuming you, you, you not rated, set, if not you set rated. the priority of the audio higher, you would get all the audio first. Oh, yeah. But yeah. what we could overlay over this is the notion of client deadline. I have a timeliness, right? That's what and, I was asking. Yeah. It's, it's not shown here. And that's something we could extend this by. And what you would do is just prune this queue with any of these objects that had passed the deadline that that client asked. So, Will, FYI, you used half of your time. OK, awesome. Well, I'm I'm done. Excellent. Good He's answer. He's arrived at his deadline before it. Yes. Okay. That's the proposal. Can I? Uh, uh, there, OK. Will Luke, Will you were in from before, yeah? So if I, oh, sorry. Um, the. V subscriber can subscribe to multiple namespaces, multiple producers, multiple broadcasters, whatever. The problem with the subscriber, okay, not problem, I'll, I'll, a clarifying question. Is uh, red scoped to a namespace? When you reply and say A is greater than B, are you allowed to say somebody else's namespace? Or does it have to no, be tracks within your namespace? This publisher has announced a namespace. And I think they can, that namespace is authoritative for the track names that you publish, it should also be authoritative for the relative track priorities that you declare. Yeah, so the publisher can only choose priorities within its, its namespace. namespace. The subscriber can choose inter namespace priorities. Yes, because it's going one track from one namespace and another track from another. And it, it would have to understand. One might use priorities of 10,400 and the other is 55. But the, they're equally valid, right? OK. Uh, so I think I forget. I don't know who's first. Have Mo, Sue Osco, and then Mo. 
uh, just to clarify, in this case, the P1 should have received both A and B subscriptions yes. to say A is greater than B. Yeah, I think this is slide is misleading because it shouldn't say A greater than B anywhere. There should be you cannot say because they're independent numbers. subscriptions. It's just a convenience. I can update it to yeah. show. You're proposing a solution. So if it yeah. was if if the discussion was saying if you didn't had uh this should be in subscribe okay or this should be this granular. Well, no, 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 no. So look, look. So if P1 receives a subscribe for A and and P1 sends a subscribe okay that with it says the priority of A is two. And then it gets a subscribe for B, and it and it says and it sends a subscribe okay saying the priority of B is ten, and two is higher priority than ten, right. and so that's how you get the A. No, but B a relationship. clarifying question that uh, that will show, I think, Suas's real concern. If there's not four, there's four thousand, and you get three hundred different priorities for object A, and you get three hundred different priorities for object B. You gotta take the geometric mean or arithmetic mean no, or something of the, the, the priorities are only apply to each client. They only apply. You go forward with no preference, right? So, well, and your four thousand well, people here, you handle each one of them independently. As you return data to them. Are, okay, so another question: uh, Are you saying that that in the event of any conflict, the the result is always no pref? I I believe it's we're going to end in that state. It's the fairest thing to do. Forget any of them said no pref or equality. If they if they have any conflict whatsoever, the automatic behavior for all relays upstream is no pref. Unless you pay follow, your CDN a lot of money on the side, which is what Luke said, should be no fo pref. Follow publisher priority. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. You you follow you you. Mr. Man, what you said before is R2 propagates up no pref, period, in a conversation. Yeah. And you acknowledge we might change that if all the, if, 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 if C1 through 4 had all asked for the same thing, we might decide to do something different yes. propagate up. But your I just proposal worry is that no pref. That, that is so brutal that just one comes along and you're going to update your, you have thrashing in, in it. But if you're, if this is a system just for WebEx and you know that audio is always higher than video, I, I think it would be reasonable to say that you could you don't have to go forward with no pref, right? You can go forward with any of these combinations. We would have never done that. We would have done it on the publisher side. P1 would have said audio was Yeah, higher. and then yeah, you and just you have know. all your clients say no pref, and you honor what the publisher dictated, which is perfectly fine. Too. Okay. Okay. I'm going to cap the clarifying yeah. questions. Yeah. You have 10 minutes left for clarifying questions. <laughs> Hopefully, we can clarify in 10 minutes. Uh, whoever's then next, Ian? Ian and then Kiro. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, oh, Victor's been up. Um, Okay, Sorry. I I understand that some people are a little bit confused about the slide, but it, I, I understand what you're trying to say, and it seems totally sensible. Um, but I guess it's not a clarifying question. I still think forwarding like uh, preferences up from R2 is super terrifying to me as like a person who runs relays. Like like let's just talk about like situations where like as a subscriber, like I'm now incentivized to always make my stuff the highest priority because that connection is not just serving like my one video, it's like a CDN, like backhaul connection that may be serving like a hundred customers. And now I've incentivized every endpoint to use the lowest possible priority in hopes that in backhaul, they'll get higher priority and they'll get more bandwidth. Like, like this is like, you're setting yourself up rife for like gaming the system by like uh, allowing the client to like terrifying. client. Yeah, as a CDN propagate. operator, I, I would I totally not propagate. You can stop me. <laughs> I don't have one. Wait, wait, wait. I, so wait, we need to write this cue down. Lots of people. So as you've already clarified three times, what can you possibly need to clarify? <laughs> okay. Who else? Who's next? It was Victor. Victor, go. Yeah. Apparently, that's me. Uh, I, I want to use the AD hat on. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> so, so one, one clarifying question. So, if. if uh, so if if just just for the discussion uh, clarification question, if R two has to send uh, almost all is no pref, what is the point of sending that message? Because it's it there is there's not much point in a distribution relay. Your first job is to be fair between flows, so it's just we're using the mechanism where the preference really exists is out here in this last mile yeah exactly so to so, accommodate that so basically i mean my understanding is like one of the latecomer can come and say like okay now you the relay has to say like no pref right so any i mean there is no order of coming them so if if on, one of the subscribers c4 comes in like half an hour later saying like hey i want to no pref um i want to have a to b yeah and then it, you 
you need to update because rest of the clients are saying like a greater than yeah. b now somebody says say a equals to b now you have to propagate all the information to the um to so the original publisher I, right i agree so you could do what jenna said which is you take a majority vote that's one way to solve that problem or you just say what i what i would do is i i never actually honor the clients i always go forward with no pref and i don't change based on what yeah, I, i'm exactly. a distribution network so so it, it seems to me like i mean this this relate to p1 uh, or re, re, r2 r r2 to r1 yeah. to p1 yeah. it's kind of like depending on what relay wants to have its own policy right yes so this is not like any strict requirement That's it's perfect. not we can okay. i don't believe we should mandate what the what we do okay. we got to treat this like any other hop this is a su subscriber this is a publisher we got to use the same semantics yeah yeah good okay. thank you okay victor now your turn uh, uh yeah I'm, I'm a huge fan of ha what happens on the left side of this diagram but i have a question about what happens in the right about specifically. So I'm trying to think how I would actually implement this. And the way I would probably like naively implement this is I would have a triple priorities and no pref is zero. Uh, and I would have a tuple where you have the subscriber priority is the first number and then the publisher priority. Is there a clarifying question here? It is, it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> expressed as you a design point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I would implement the way I would implement it. It would be like a tuple and like the first would be subscriber and the second would be publisher. But the the problem with that is that it does it actually conveys the semantics of the top two arrows well and the bottom arrow well, but it doesn't. A equals B is kind of really annoying to implement if you think about this way like because the alternative way is like i could try to reconcile the number of space on the publisher size and the number of space on the send subscriber size and figure out how do i like recover ordering between those two and that's really I, annoying I, so like okay i don't believe you have to do that question, this clarifying question sounds like this is really annoying what are you going to do about it that's not a clarifying question yes <laughs> Yeah, the question is like, do we actually need A equals B? Okay, do, do we need A equals B? That's a clarifying question. Okay. Please keep your clarifying questions brief. I believe clarifying. we do need A equals B. And okay. these are separate connections. Bear that in mind, right? Can, Each can one you, is a just, separate connection. Can you say just a little more? Can, uh, can you say a little bit more about why we need A equals B in a single connection? Right, because, because that's where the A equals B is. A equals B means I, as a subscriber, I want these two tracks to have equal priority with what you're sending me. I want one packet of one, one of another, or however you choose to allocate it. Maybe like split screen. I'm watching two videos at the same time. Yeah, okay. good example. And yeah, and it's it's overriding the original publisher preference. That's the difference. You could say, well, if they're equal, I don't need to express anything. The default should be that they're equal. But no, the default should be that I have no preference. In which case, the original publisher preference is used. But if I want them to be equal, I must explicitly ask for equality. Oh, awesome. Um, good question. So in practice, I assume that you're always going to forward first subscription all the way down, and then the very next is going to just override it with no pref, right? Can you clarify your clarification? <laughs> Sorry, yes. Uh, so we, like Colin originally planned, I think Luke proposed yeah. that the, if there is one subscriber, right, so yeah. that signal go, propagates all the way up. Right, so the, in practice, that's what's going to happen, right? So there's going to be someone going to be first, yeah. yeah. All right, so the very next, like microsecond next subscription, will cause the relay to update the subscription upstream. That's why, again, as a CDN operator, I would always go forward with no pref, and I would ignore the preference in my last mile. But that's for a CDN. If you have a private network and you're building on this, you might want to honor that first client because maybe all the clients are likely to be the same. So it's purely an operational decision. I don't believe we mandate this in our mock transport. And I think if CDNs want to do something different, they'll do something different. And as Alan said, the market will correct their errors. We're hard stopping this discussion in five minutes. So, okay. Christian. Two clarifying questions. Yeah. First, you have only a P1 on that diagram. What if there is a P2? If there is a P2, then, so, 
this use case is showing a flow in a namespace, right? They, because it's going back to this publisher. I, if there was a P2, it would be I, a different namespace. I, I understand that there will be a different namespace, but the connection between R1 and R2, yeah. R2 might have a single connection to R1, and in the single connection to R1, do subscribe to tracks from P1 and tracks from P2. Right, I think R2 and R1 have to establish independent connections per namespace in order to implement priorities. Really? Otherwise, we have to mix them, and then we have this problem of, of, of mixing. Yeah. Okay, that's a clarification. Uh, the second clarification is, what if the relay is forwarding fractions of objects? Fractions of objects? It would still forward the fraction with the priority level associated with the object. Okay. Um, I had the same uh, clarification as Christian's first one. Just to reiterate, this is only applying to a namespace, and between namespaces, we're not we're not doing any of this. Because they can because between namespaces, they can use different numbers to represent priority, and then therefore the higher number always wins. So you start gaming it. Everyone's using the max int. So I think it has to be within a namespace, and the consequence that you then have to to preserve prioritization between nodes, you have to run new connections, I think is, is it's a consequence. I'd like to avoid it, but then I've also had debates in the web transport world where we spoke about this, and they said the overhead of actually carrying multiple web transport connections, it's just more frames. Like, it's not actually that bad. So I think as a CDN, we, we may have thousands of connections between R2 and R1, each representing a different namespace. Yes. Um, a namespace can have more than one publisher, and I don't think so. This 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 model will break. Um, we can make it work. And other than that, like um, in general, I, I agree with the direction that you're going. Is there a clarifying question? I clarify myself that I in general I agree with the direction you're going. Self clarifying. Do <laughs> so you ask? Do I agree with this question? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> I may have misunderstood or misheard you, but I thought you originally were specifying some relay behavior. But what I think I heard recently now is that there is no relay anything. It's just subscriber can pick its preference, period. And it doesn't matter if the subscriber is an in subscriber or a relay. The subscriber just picks its preference, has no, no other semantics. There's no aggregation at relays. There's no no pref at relays. It's purely any subscriber's decision. Yes, what to I do. think that's a simple rule because we can never know. A, a, a relay never knows if it's the edge relay, for example. So we can't have different rules for edge relays. And you don't know if you're talking to the end publisher or another relay. So I think we need the same rule all the time. Okay, so the spec would not say anything about preserve publisher or anything. It's just no. subscriber. Subscriber chooses and that overrides want. any existing publisher preference, but its job is to propagate the publisher preference in case nodes downstream uh, Wait, need to use said, it. You, you what just I'm said saying, override subscriber preference, and now you said propagate publisher no? preference. Yes. The job, the job of R1, for example, is to, is to propagate. Each node must propagate the original publisher preference downstream in case there's a node, for example, this one, which says, I have no pref, in which case you should now use this value that had to come from the original publisher. Right. We're but, we stop stopped hearing, Will. Alan, can you jump slides up for me? Uh, yeah. Do you have the slides? Let's see. I think you can you put oh, up the slides? Oh, oh, the old slides. Yep. Okay. Let me stop Thanks. Um, so my, my, mine's, and I've just tried to aggregate mine together out of uh, things I've heard from various people, and it is a bit of a kitchen sink, but that's because that's like how this working group works of trying to, and I tried to meet the requirements that I heard from everybody on this, and I still don't think it ends up very complicated. One more slide forward. Okay, this may not make a ton of sense here. So, and this is very similar to what Will was proposing here, in that uh, the, Sub, that, that the publisher is going to, uh, let me just say each track for right now, it's gonna give each track a priority. The subscriber is going to be able to request a, a numeric priority for, for each thing. And I'll call this publisher subscriber, publisher subs, uh, priority and subscriber priority. So the algorithm basically at the stage of the relay is first of all, ignore 
expired objects. Okay, so we have to have a, an object expiry type concept. Those get taken out right away. Um, then it is the same thing Will was saying. The uh, subscriber priority is the next most important thing in choosing what to do. So if there was a subscriber priority, um, I mean, I'm going lowest first, but what? But that's just like, how do you spell low? I, I mean, but there's a you know, numeric number there that was put in the subscription. If it was there, um, it was there. Um, I don't have any concept of equal. And the reason I don't have any concept of equal is as soon as we start trying to say that two different streams are supposed to, or two different flows of information are supposed to get equal priority, we're going to get into making leaky buckets and all the usual queuing problems of doing that. It's quite complicated in a relay. I don't think we have use cases that need it for real-time systems because let's just say you're doing two screen sharing and you want both screens. Um, you, the question you need to ask is if you can't get both of them, would you rather have them both fail or would you have one of them work and the other one fail? And the answer in these types of systems is always, you'd rather have one of them work than both of them fail. And so you don't do things equal. You put one of them above the other. Um, and that gets us out of needing to implement all of these leaky bucket or queuing or sort of fair sharing algorithms between priorities that are equal. Um, then we have the sender priority or the publisher priority is the next thing that you um, go on. This last point, I don't know if we know this or not. If all of those things being equal, then you could choose to do it on basically um, a last in first out or a FIFO sort of, which one goes next. Uh, I think we only need um, FIFO, that's, that's my take. But if people were like, that's a hill I'm willing to die on, we need to be able to indicate which, you know, either of those, like I, it's, <laughs> It's not going to complicate implementations in any significant way to support both, right? Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, this point, subscriber order and subscriber delivery preference. That, that's the LIFO FIFO thing. Um, only go from the in subscriber to the first relay publisher and not aggregate upstream. I mean, I think the more I hear about um, the reasons a, a CDN network wouldn't want to do that, I, I think that that's the right thing, that we wouldn't want to do that. And the idea that when the first person joined, you propagated it, and then when a second person joined, you had a conflict, you changed it, just seems like you're going to have really crappy behavior. Like, you, you know, you're going to have this experience that's working one way, and then somebody else joins this call, not even related to me, and my experience changes, that sounds like a, a really hard to explain to end users type of uh, experience that I'd probably try and avoid. So that's that's why that's that direction. Um, so this sorry. is pretty much the whole pro. I, I've got another slide after this talks about some indications of this, but I think it's probably take clarifying questions yeah, on this. Just a quick one. So if I understand correctly, I mean, relays will generally not have a subscriber preference inherently. So, and they're not being forwarded. So then the, the publisher driven, the sender priority controls all hops to except for the last hop. Yes, which okay. I think was the same as what Will's proposing, right? And look, yeah, and when we, yeah <laughs> we, we can talk. Now, look, I, I have, I, I realized in, in this, it doesn't specify whether this was specified on an object, a group or a track sort of priority, but I don't think it changes the discussion much. Um, obviously, some of these things can only be specified at sort of a track level. Some of them you might be able to do a little bit different granularity than that, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask about FIFO. Is that based on when you received it, or is it based on object ID or group ID? Or is it just based on reception time? Um, I, I, I thought of that as re reception time at this relay. Right versus trying to look in at something else, but really, honestly, I I'd, I'd be totally willing to accept a solution. You know, if somebody was like, "Oh, that is a great clarifying question." I mean, should and should that should we just use like the the group ID slash object ID as the the indicator of when it was? Like uh, any of those, I think, will result in roughly the same thing in almost all cases, um, and any of them could work. Ian. Um, by sender priority, just to clarify, you mean publisher priority, right? I, it's not trying to nitpick. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, okay. that's, yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, the original publisher priority is what I mean by that. Cool. And by subscriber priority, I'm, or, or subscriber order and subscriber priority, I mean the in subscriber priority and order. Okay. And then the other clarifying question, which is a build off on that one, which is um, if an object expires, um, does that mean that all objects that are 
earlier than it should automatically be expired, even if they arrive later? Marginally a priority question. I guess, or maybe this is I, really, I, it's, really it's, 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 it's a reasonable question in the what object you send, how it expiry relates to what object you send next. Because it so, probably means that, like, basically you just got like network reordering or something, and like, really, like, the like the one that expired, like, you know, basically you lost a packet and this, this object arrived later than it should have. And, and so I'm, I'm just, I, I, I mean, my view of that, that is each, like, like I logically think about that as each object has its own expiry time and they might be different. So it's completely possible to have situations where a later object expired before an earlier object. But like, that seems like not a hill worth there dying on. And I think in, if you're an application that doesn't want to do that, you're not going to do that. You're going to set the, 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 the expiry time as the same on all of your things. Did I say something completely backwards? Oh, or, I, no, I just realized you said Sorry. I, I assumed that for some reason the expiry time. Uh, I wrote it on there instead of putting in the chat so that I wouldn't be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> What's it get for standing in front of it? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> It's no big deal. It's on my drafts too. It's not a real I was, secret. I, I was for some reason assuming the objects had a uniform expiry time, but you're, I guess that's a detail that, okay, maybe you'll get it. I mean, I think in most, no, I wasn't, that's, I'm not a detail I was going to talk more about. I mean, I think that for the uh, use cases like a video or audio track, they probably almost certainly do have a uniform expiry time. But if you start moving to something like catalogs or other things, I can easily imagine use cases where we might want to move out of that space a little bit. So my, the algorithms just like, you know, however objects expire is how they expire, and like we don't send them; they're they're yeah. not considered on the forwarding. That's that's the only. And I think this fits in very much to Victor's sort of like, what are the signals? Uh, the time that it, that they made this, you know, the subscribe the, the the in subscriber, the in publisher information, um, and then the other signal that's sort of implicitly here but not really described is the connection you're ready going to send on has to say i am ready to send something and as soon as that happens you run this algorithm and decide what to do it. it's, yep. that's pretty simple it, I'll set of signals it seems like in general the direction we're going but yeah, yeah. um so two things uh, just understanding um uh, first one is you did i hear you correctly when you said so i thought you said that the sender is always going to have uh, non unequal priorities across tracks but do I understand correctly here that the subscriber can have equal priorities across tracks? Because otherwise, you'd never go in past. Basically. Exactly, exactly right. It, okay. it, if, if that was not, yeah, if it wasn't equal, you'd never even go in. Correct. That. Yeah, That's, yeah. You're, 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 okay. you're hearing this correctly. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not saying that the publisher might not even put equal priorities between tracks. That's legal for it to do. It's just sort of, you know, then it's going to fall down to other things to choose what to do. But I don't, I mean, in this case, you you are still assuming that it does get. Oh, I see. So 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 if if it puts equal priorities for tracks, then the object priority is the one that breaks the tie effectively. It, it, right. Like then the it FIFO, becomes FIFO. FIFO objects yeah. just go yeah, yeah. out the way they do. Right. So okay. if, if second, my audio, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The second question I had is 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 in terms of again the same question I'd asked well earlier about deadlines and so on. If are you thinking about this as strict priority? And therefore, you only deliver, you know, given that the track is the highest level decision point, if you have infinite data on the highest priority track, you never get to the lower priority tracks. That yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I find this whole thinking about this, the, the infinite data. I mean, if you have a really large amount of data, um, you've totally failed a real time system. You'll never work. You need to, un like, at a different level in the system, you need to unsubscribe to that track. I mean, this is like the persistent congestion question right. versus this, right? Um, so I don't, I, I find strict priorities are like completely wrong for what you need for HTTP and exactly what you need for all real time systems. Yeah, no, so I, I, I think I, this is all strict priority. I see that. I guess yep. uh, I'm trying to. And this is my uh, ignorance as well, right? Just trying to understand yep. where asking, does the um, choice of multiple see can, see uh, 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 the choice of multiple bit rates, for example, ABR selections and yep. so on, where do they fall in this, or how do they fall? How do they how do they align with this stuff? Oh, okay, great question. A ton of our use cases were around ABR or predicting or whatever. The the client is always going to be running clever algorithms. or like I'm subscribing to this track, or I'm unsubscribing from this track, or maybe we'll have a way to pause a track or whatever. But I mean, basically, the 
the client, the, the in subscriber needs to control deeply which things it's subscribed to. And that's how things like ABR works, how, how things like, um, and, and it can update those on the fly, right? It might be, say, it might initially have a subscribe where Alice had a higher subscriber priority and then later it changes it to Bob to have a higher subscriber priority or whatever, right? So those, those are dynamically changed by the clients and they, those are needed to hit the use cases we did. This is just what the algorithm, the relay needs to run given the things that are subscribed to. So the, the relay isn't trying to do ABR, the end client does ABR. Okay, hold on. Every do you have a cue? Uh, so I've been. I'm, I, know, I, I know that Mike and Will and Mike, and then you said Will. I, I think Mo. Mo. Who else? Just going around the room. I mean, I. I have I'm not taking any clarified questions from Suha, so I know how his side goes. <laughs> Should I just work around the room and then we'll form uh, a new sure. cue? Okay. They're just clarifying questions. So Mo. Why not? Right. <laughs> um. So the. The the subscribe the the original as worded. This is not really a relay algorithm. This is just every publisher does this. Yes. This happens to be a relay is publishing. Every even the original publisher would yes. run this exact same logic. And the way that uh, can this support the use case of I want um, the newest data first for the audio and then the video. Let's say there's only one video. So there's not even multiple. There's a, I want the I want the latest latest group first for the audio and then the video. Would it support this use case? Is it, is it, I think your question is it, it's the latest group for both for both of those, and then after that, the second latest group for, for audio and then for, video. For audio yeah. then video. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think it does. I think that what you would end up doing is you would say, I want audio ahead of oh. video, and that, that this only gives you a way you would get all the outstanding audio groups before you had any outstanding video groups. So I don't think it supports that use case, but I also think that that's a, you, you know, I, actually, I, I'll, let me backtrack on that a little bit. Depending if you allow each group to have, um, a different uh, sender priority, publisher priority put in it, then you can do the type of thing that Luke originally had in Warp. So in that sense, it might slightly support it, but it, it's not great support. Another clarifying question. So there are, there are no priorities in any of this, right? This is, this is, there's a track priority, which is like a track info field, but there's not object or group level priorities. I, 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 I've been vague and, 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 and so on the, when I say that there's a sender priority, okay, that mm -hmm. sender priority, I, I was totally vague on whether that's set per track, per group, or per object. Okay, so it could right. be finer yeah. granularity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we're Christian, and then, oh, I, I don't know what order we're in, What's, but we're, we're on this side of the room for sure. Christian, go for it. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so we we have this uh, priority mechanism, but we have also a way for the uh, subscriber or the client, in fact. Is there another? To uh, say, okay, yes. that that uh, okay, that stream in which you are sending group five, please stop sending it. Of course. So how does that play there? It's just it gets out of the load, or the, the, that's not really part of the algorithm. At the point that you've unsubscribed from that stream, the relay is no longer. You have not unsubscribed from the stream. Sorry, you. You have nuked the group number 17 because it's too far behind ah that's great yeah. so Don't colin, colin you, have <laughs> yeah. you have 15 minutes remaining okay yeah well okay hold on it's will and then mike, mike. And, then and, and then you can have a new cue but if will and mike get to go here before anyone else gets in <laughs> So I think my I had two questions for clarifying. The first was that in your third bullet point, did you actually even pick the object with the lowest sender priority? Because you didn't mention the the, the object priorities that we have in the draft today. And then you, you clarified it and I, said- I, I don't know what object priorities we have in the draft today. We have a field called- We have a part marked non-consensus. This, this, okay. I think that's what I call sender priority right, is that field. Right, yeah. object, not per track. So that's why I wanted clarification. I see. Okay. okay. That's a mistake on my part. Yeah. Okay. And then the, can you clarify again, you, the case where A equals B, and you said this is complex to implement. Mm -hmm. What if the original publisher expresses no 
priority difference between tracks, or there's no send order and the client has no preference. How do you send the objects now? And isn't that equivalent eventually to A equals B? So for, for me here, it would be just FIFO at the bottom is how it would land. And so you wouldn't be fair sharing between them in any way. You'd just be whatever order the objects came in, in you'd be sending them out. And I mean, you know, that, that'd be the same if everybody set everything to zero or whatever. Okay, right? yeah. I, I acknowledge that. I'm not saying that's a great solution, but that's that's what I was proposing. Yeah. Can you say why A equals B is difficult? To me, it's I'm just picking objects out of a queue. And if I pick one and one, that's, that's not hard. Like, well, is why? fair equal number of objects? Or is fair equal number of bytes? Let's start there. And then you move in quickly to, you have to remember what you'd sent previously, right? If I just sent 10,000 objects from stream A, now I have no no objects in my queue at all, and ob an object from track B comes, I should, I should probably send it. But, I think we're veering away from you know, clarification here. Yeah. We're arguing the well, merits of A equals B. Well, it's an important clarification, but maybe over beers. Well, I mean, I, 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 it's I mean very clearly one proposal has A equals B and one does not. That, that's look. The, the, this, what I'm proposing is strict pri priority. If somebody has a simple algorithm for doing non-strict priorities, it's not like I. It's not like that breaks anything I care about. Mike. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. That's, yes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We've got uh, Mike and Luke and Zahid. Uh, very briefly. Uh, so when you get all the way down here, if you have an object that's in flight, uh, can you stream that? Directly to a subscriber, you have enough of the header to know that it's you know that your highest priority track maybe, yeah. um, and does that exacerbate the problem of infinite data uh, with strict priority? Um, okay, so the, 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 I might need to clarify your question in a second, but yes, I am imagining that relays could choose to implement streaming implementations where they started streaming an object. Um, and if that was an infinitely large object, it would head of line block every single thing on the same stream as it. But that is true no matter what you do with priorities. It's true with no priorities. There's no way around that. The solution to that is don't send infinitely large, you know, like put them on different streams or send smaller objects, right? Like, so usual head of line blocking response, I think. Is that, does that get at the heart of the question? Yep. Is it, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So, Lowest sender priority, is this, just to clarify again, because I think a few people ask it, is this like Wills where it's the publisher, original publisher chooses with subscribe okay, saying this track has priority five. What you've said in the few comments makes it sound like this is based on the priority field in the object, and you just pick whichever track has the lowest object in the buffer or something? Okay, I, I think we need to get clear about where we transfer so unfortunately, I use the word track here, which I didn't quite mean to do. So we need to send, we need to transfer, um, <clears throat> per, we need to have something that is the pub end publisher. I mean, I shouldn't have sent sender. It's like the, you know, the end pub, it's a, it's a number chosen by the end publisher that has to do with the priority of these things being sent. Um, and I'm avoiding whether it's in a subscribe okay or not. So we had a question earlier, like, can this change in the middle of a track? A lot of people thought it could. So I had always assumed that this was logically put at the the beginning, of the, you know, uh, that it was at the beginning of a group or that it was in, in the object or something. But it's some type of number like that. If we agree that you can't, that a publisher can't change it once it starts sending a track, then obviously we we put it at its track info level, right? But um, I just think about it as we don't need multiple numbers that are picked by the um, end publisher. We need one number that's picked, and maybe it can change per group or per object. But whatever it is, we'll pick an appropriate place to transport it. It doesn't really change much which the algorithm is. Um, okay. And similar to Will's, is this scope to the namespace, or is this everything you can subscribe to uses the same number space? So. You'll note that all this does is the relay is just, it's got some stuff coming in and it picks some numbers and it looks, it, it does like comparison on the numbers. That's it. It doesn't have to keep track of namespaces or anything. Now, the application built around this and the catalog and everything obviously needs to make sure that these are scoped to namespace and that they're used consistently inside of whatever, at least inside the track or whatever namespace, right? Because that, you know, otherwise it's going to work. If you believe that you have a single subscriber on a single connection getting things from multiple namespaces, I just don't think that that's a use case we need to uh, you know, fully 
deal with the priorities in between. So the way I look at this is these are just yes. numbers and the application that uses it will have to use them consistent, consistently, that, that, that's it. So I think, yes, it's scoped to namespace, but there's no requirement for the relay to understand what the namespaces are and enforce that in any way. It just does a compare of two numbers, that's all it does. Okay. So I was so, in the queue then. Uh, so my question is, uh, without this first if in this algorithm, it will work? No. No. No, not at all. Because why, it, why is that so important? Uh, because it yes, fits. I don't see the word yet. What are you talking about? So, so yeah, the, 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 the pick unexpired objects, right? That one? Yeah. Yeah. So it comes back to that problem uh, that Mo was getting at is, can I do recent audio and video? Um, so you know, can really old video, let's say I say audio is more important than video, can really old audio just take over and be the only thing that's ever sent and I never get any video? And the answer to that would be yes, unless there was a way to get rid of really old audio. So, so the, the, the reason I'm asking, like between the two tracks and multiple tracks, can we track um, the, un, uh, the expired object or unexpired object irrespective of which track it belongs to? Can I kind of do that? I mean, I just, yeah, yeah. I just think of expiry time as being an absolute or relative time um, that that is basically tied to the object, not to anything else, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Eight Thank minutes you. called. Okay, we're gonna make it. Okay. Uh, Ian, I think, and then Will. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. So, um, I think. Uh, anyway, I, again, I think this is is sensible. Um, I I have a DDoS though. Uh, oh, if we don't, don't make the priority, no, it's it's not okay. solve a problem. As long as the uh, sender or the original publisher priority is per track, I think it's all cool. Um, if we allow it to vary by object, then every single time a new object comes in, uh, that you could change the priority, and you would have to go and then list like you can think up a better data structure than I can. You'd have to go through every single connections. Uh, data structure of prioritized subscriptions and potentially like move it throughout the list or you'd force the sender to for every single subscription uh, to do a, a full linear search through every single active subscription that they have open every single time you send an object. Um, I think either of those is pretty onerous. Okay, uh, let, let me clarify. <laughs> let me clarify your question of how do you plan to stop this DDoS attack? <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, I like look. I I think that I think we need to design for high performance relays. I think it's super important. So I don't think like a linear search through everything on an incoming packet is sane. Right? That's that's not going to happen. So what I was thinking was a priority queue that was ordered by basically the tuple of these things connected together. Right? And so. If that doesn't work where we can have at least login inserts and, well, I, mean, I was assuming order one exits and login inserts, but if we can't hit that, I don't think we have an algorithm that's appropriate for high performance realism. I think Will's next. Will. Yeah, I, I wanna go back and, and clarify your statement that the, the namespace is communicated, but it doesn't matter in your algorithm. And you're simply comparing numbers between namespaces. But that's incredibly dangerous because now to game it as a publisher, I just pick max int as my number, and every relay down the chain sends my my data first. I, I think that's no, not workable. No, no, no. I mean, so obviously this, this so this only ha this algorithm is only run when when there's like sort of a, a, a subscription where you you need to get stuff. So this is still within the context of a subscription, right? So if the subscriptions are per namespace. The um, it's subscription is per track, and we're this is all about relative track priority. So all those tracks are within a namespace, but a client can at the same time make requests against two namespaces. This thing's dead, and and the relay has so, to so, send them. Okay, let's talk about it from just the point of view of the in subscriber first of all, right? So yeah. I request two. Yeah. So I, res I yeah, request yeah. from namespace A two tracks and namespace B two tracks. And the namespace A uses numbers in the 10 million and namespace B, A, B, whatever the other one is, uses very low numbers. If I'm only looking at numbers, I'm gonna unfairly bias the namespace that chose the higher number. 
And I think that's dangerous. So I think we have to scope the numbers by namespace. Okay. I mean, I think what I would try and do is cause those to be shared fairly. I, th I, I think what I imagine for that, I didn't write down here, unfortunately, is if a client was doing that, was doing it on different connections. Right. right. You must, but it's the same connection to namespaces. You need to fair share the namespace. And then within the namespace, you can, we can do the fancy do stuff. We actually have a real use case for multiple namespaces in the yeah. same connection. <laughs> All right. Colin, 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 four, minutes. <laughs> four minutes, Colin. Who's okay. in the queue right now? John. Christian is definitely in the yeah. or, oh, and then I think oh, John. Yeah. Yeah, well, what uh, you have here on the board is basically taking the subscriber priority, then the sender priority, and then uh, a time. Then FIFO, yeah. Yes. And what worries me there is how do you push that down the stack to the quick connection? Ah, uh, that's a great connection. That's a really good co question. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I, you know, m my sort of take on that was um, obviously we can only put one number to the the quick per stream, right? Um, so I was imagining that the uh, and I didn't say it here, but I was imagining that the the sender priority got written to the quick stream. So the first object that went on a stream, whatever its sender priority was or, um, or publisher priority, would get set as the priority for that stream. And all other future objects on that stream would have the same one. But I think that that, you know, you, you need to dig into that a little bit, bunch and think about it. I was also thinking that we would probably set a range of numbers in that zone that mapped to given uh, diff cert code points in some cases. But that's that's a whole other complicated issue with that. Yeah. Um, so. That, anyway, that's what I'm thinking. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Okay, that's John and Zuhas, and awesome. you get one minute each. Okay, okay I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to ask the clarifying question. Thank you. Um, which is, I'm trying to. So the one thing that it seems to me is that we we seem to be using priorities for both priorities and also for 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 what we want to be receive order. We want to put like we we are expressing dependency of one object on another, and we're calling it priorities. And I, it just I'm trying to I'm trying to think about this in my head. And if you just ask me how many priorities do you want, I would say like four or eight. It's probably adequate. But if you start to express object dependency, then you need infinite numbers. Um, it, I wonder if it's like I like the idea of using tracks because those are fewer numbers. But I don't know how you're thinking about this. Yeah. I mean, I, I, all the use cases I care about can easily be solved with a, a small number of numbers, probably more than four, but you know, less than 256, whatever, that type of range. But I have, I do not think it will complicate the implementations in any significant way or really cost us much on the things to make that number be a variant and allow, I don't know, two to 60 right. seconds, Colin, whatever. Yep. It just, it, it does because of the case that we were talking about earlier, where if you have to re change the object priorities and so on, if you, all you're dealing with is a, a, a data structure that has 256, then nobody cares. Oh, I see it. It has to do with the size of the data structure. Got it. Thanks. Okay. I was thinking a low number of priorities and I hadn't thought about that enough. Uh, somebody else had a question. It's, it's me. Um, just to clarify this algorithm, this algorithm says that if there is a subscriber order, pick that. But if you don't have subscriber order, pick sender priority. Yeah. That's that's what it's saying. It's, it's, not, it's not a tuple of all the three. It's like if you have subscriber order, that takes a preference. If you have, if you don't have subscriber order, then or, or sender, if the subscriber order is the same. Same. Then yeah. the sender priority uh, yeah. takes. And yeah. All right. Time's up. Can you stop sharing, please? Me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we've. Thank you. Thank you to both Will and Colin for those presentations. Uh, I'm going to ask a series of questions, and I'm going to actually ask them. Everyone's in the uh, I, I, I'm going to show. Uh, where the heck did my text window go? No, no, I'm, I'm going to put it on the screen. I'm just failing to share the window right now. Ah, that's the problem. OK, here we go. All right, did that show? Is that there? Yes, that's there. Lovely. OK, so I think this is all the permutations of things we can so, All right, so our, our optimistic trajectory today was to ha is to set, assign some PRs for tonight and then argue about that tomorrow. Um, I think these are all five permutations of how what we can conclude today. Um, is there a permutation that I'm missing that somebody wants to add? Uh, 
I'd be interested in hearing too if somebody wanted in a very short way to say I liked these parts of these proposals, but I didn't like this part, and here's no, why. No, 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 no. So okay, no, okay. no, because like either either we're gonna write a PR and we're gonna. I'm not saying I got it. Got it. Fair, fair. I, Somebody's gonna write a PR sure. and we'll start with that and we'll add stuff to it to get it to where it needs to be, or maybe we need got to it. merge both because they're both equally great or whatever. All right. Does anyone want to speak to another option? Yes, Ian. After, maybe after, uh, maybe after a question, or maybe now, uh, there's the question of granularity, which we never discussed, and I think, yeah. like, I, I think it still matters. I agree, it matters. I think we should have a PR where we can and add granularity stuff to it, oh. unless you need granularity to make this decision. In which case, I think you're on number five. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay, I can, I can argue about it. All right. That. So, for those of you who are still awake out in remote land, like please raise your hand and meet. For those of you who are here in the room, just raise your hand like a human being. Um, uh, all right. So, who, who is currently in position one that they think Will's thing is is more promising? And it, while not necessarily perfect, like we, let's see PR on that. Let's add it until it becomes perfect. Raise your hand. Well, specifically asking. Only yes. 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 Exclusive. yes. Okay. So we're going to ask Will. The idea here is we're going to ask Will to go write a PR. So I see three hands. Okay. Number two. Let's start with Colin's proposal. Let's have him write a PR tonight, and then we can start bashing that into perfection. Raise your hand. You can raise your hand, Colin, if you if you like yours. I'll go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One. All right. You guys, you guys are going to bash the order of the questions, really? I mean, I, I gave them all to you, so I'm not surprising you. Okay, so there was one vote for that. Number three, we want to make two people write PRs and make them suffer, and then we can argue tomorrow. All right. Uh, nobody's raising hands remotely. I see one, two, three, four, five, six hands for that. Okay. One remote. Seven. Eight. Eight. Okay, eight votes for that. Number four. Both these suck, and you are going to write slides on what's better tomorrow. Raise your hand. Okay, that's dead. I want to get a clear set of bullets. They suck for this point of granularity. We need granularity in this discussion. 100%. Yeah, that's, 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 we can get to the best. Examples in the details. We can add those in the details. Yeah, so, so, can, so can we take one of the existing proposals, pick a PR, and add granularity to it? Or do we need to start from a completely different sheet of paper? I think we asked both the people to write address the granularity question the proposal. Okay, super. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 no one is so no one so no one is volunteering for slides tomorrow for a completely different proposal. Great. Number five. Let's just keep arguing and not do a PR tonight. Raise your hand. Ooh, so I, 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 my point is like I can do anything have. So that's, that's kind of like a factor which will come by. Uh, even if we are asking like okay. everybody else to put a granularity in it, but without having proper discussion and understanding what's granularity, it's hard for them also to put it in. Yeah, I do. I do feel a little bit like, you, you know, you're telling me what stones you're going to throw again at me once I write the PR would be sort of convenient to know ahead of time. Like, you know, whatever. Uh, I can go either way. And do, do, do we not think that whatever granularity could be retrofitted into either proposal? I think. All right. They're, so they're the, a little intentionally vague, so it's kind of hard to say. There's a lot of vagueness there, and they say yeah. write a PR and figure out all the vague stuff, <laughs> like, well, and then come back. You know. Well, so I mean, like the way forward is someone to write something down that we can shoot at, right? Or, or maybe two people. But then we have to. We the downside of two is then we have to fight over those PRs and like edit both of them, and and that that is going to consume way more time for both the authors. That, yes, well. We've proven time and time again that a PR is a terrible vehicle for debating solutions. It's it's not good. It's complex. It's it's fragmented. It is a fixed target. Right. Um, I feel what would be more useful is we, we get a picture up or the equivalent of a whiteboard or diagram. We merge the two proposals and we come up with a list of actions. After that, the PR is just an automatic step, right? So we're much better off designing stuff outside of PRs. We're still at the design stage. I, can I kind of say my observation? Like it's been two and a half years 
uh, 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 now I see there's some consensus coming together. Uh, it's, it's not that like uh, we have not discussed this and the two different PRs would come and we are going to fight against it. I think three is the right way forward with if Will and Cullen can spend some time today, think through, do their whiteboarding if they need it, and write up a PR. Tomorrow we'll come and discuss and say if the, uh, I'm, right I'm happy to have slides that explain it instead of PR text, as long as, yeah. as, long as it is specific enough that it could be turned into a PR without like a whole lot of ambiguity. Yeah, yeah, I would rather work at slide level than PR level. Okay, but please be specific. Uh, um, See also the question slide. I, I, I <laughs> right. I, I think we're at three. Um, uh, I, I guess we could spend time just with a wish list of details. Uh, does someone have some like higher level? Are these comments higher level right now? Well, can I ask a question first? Yeah. So, is there do do Will and Ian have or will and cullen have any desire to work together on a single merge pr or no yeah it's basically the same proposal <laughs> yeah that's what i was going to say yeah. <laughs> they seem awfully similar All right. like <laughs> slap ttl on wills and i'm like yeah I, i'm willing I mean, to <laughs> add ttl as long as cullen okay. I, yeah. I love that answer um no let, let's, let's make sorry a slot. i didn't call it ttl to, to, yeah to, totally let's let's make try and make like get a really detailed level thing and i I want to rope Ian into working with us so that he approves it has enough detail it can move to PR next, right? Okay. But and look, we'll we'll on on things where there's like hard options, we'll we'll try we won't we'll try and say like you could do this, this, or this, and that's a thing we'll talk about tomorrow in yep. debate. Which one of those choices we choose, right? Okay, that sounds does that sound great. like a way to get yes? Yeah, okay. Does anyone have a big problem with that course of action before we start nagging them? Oh, I mean, I've had problem with like the moment I saw this. Can, can you be more specific? Like, is there a different option you would want? I mean, that's why I asked for other permutations. Well, uh, I was looking at the proposal. Is there? It's basically the same proposal, and there is half of it that I really like, and half of it I think is completely awful. Okay, is is, is it a good basis to continue, or do you want to make a different proposal? Uh, I can make a half a proposal because for half of it I just agree. So I mean, it, like, can can we go for like like it, like once we finish this conversation, could the next thing be on the agenda is like, hey, let's get Victor's feedback on exactly that and what you might propose as the other half and get some feedback on that, or we could spend some time discussing granularity or any of those things. Like, what are what are some things we could do to have a better chance of success tomorrow? That's what I'm trying to ask for, and that'd be great. So yeah, uh, I think the part that's inter like. Priorities between track is basically very good, and ready for PR, and uh, I'm. So 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 so. Do you have like a completely different kind of framework or different kind of ideas how the half that you're talking about is going to work? Because then then perhaps we could look at it. Um, sure. That's a, that's another option. Uh, so if, yeah, sure. Okay. So. So I'll ask again, Victor, do you think we could take these proposals and bash it into something that would satisfy you? Or do we need to start, we have a fundamentally different starting point? Or, or Victor, could you provide a proposal for priorities inside a track like that part of it? Because that would fit very much into that overall yeah, algorithm, sure. right? I mean, like, let's okay. just like, let get your proposal on the table for that. We'll go through it. Sure. Okay, Luke. Yeah, yeah I was, oh. Luke, I was just going to say, I think we're pretty agreed on uh, inter track priorities, like subscriber chooses, publisher can override it, like if it's default or whatever. Uh, the devil's in the details within a track. I think that's the part with Cullen's proposal, just kind of glossed over it. <laughs> you know, like if you write a PR for that, it's going to be like, well, this is different than we talked about because it's this concrete solutions. Um, so, yeah, I think I think tomorrow we should have maybe different proposals for how to do the inter-track okay. parts. So do, do we want to have another proposal bake off for inter-track stuff? Like, how, do you want to lower the scope of what they're doing to inter-track stuff? Uh, between tracks? Inter. Yeah. yeah, like I, I, I have a proposal as well for inter-track, and it's similar to Will's, um, and I think we can work with it. Are you saying between which yeah. we call okay, it, I'm sorry. Call it, uh, start, use yeah. the word intra. Sorry, intra. Just Matt, you, you, so, use inside so, the track and, be, and between there's tracks. Inside and be no between. Yeah. I think, I think I I hear very strongly that we want those two pl plus to develop something for between tracks. And what I'm wondering is if we want them to also pick something for 
inter tracks or you want to essentially do this exercise for inside the track again tomorrow and not really have a but i presented inside the track you yes you did that? Two the... two separate PRs. yes like like for example cullen had fifo and lifo which is very different from what right uh, we had with wills like they group group id or something right okay so yeah. let's all right I, I think what i'm hearing is we should do that all right so Colin and Will, you are charged with producing a proposal for between track priorities. We're not going to take that job unless you also let us do something for inside the track. You can also make a proposal. Just like, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's yeah, yeah, fine. Yeah. But, I mean, like, you're welcome to make another proposal, but it sounds like we need like another slide bake off. Uh, is someone else going to produce something for, in, for inside the track? Or is it just going to be them and we're going to bash it? It, can it be done? It, like, is it, do you know what it is well enough that you could do it after this conversation's over pretty quickly on the board or just give a rough idea of what you're thinking? Oh, for, yeah, the, yeah. Both yeah. you and Victor or anyone else that has one of these? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the order stuff. It's very similar to what Will said. Yeah. I just want to add one thing, which is as, as guidance, one thing to keep in mind as you're going into this discussion and mapping on to Quick is please use the degrees of freedom you have in Quick, specifically Quick streams of things. I don't know how it exactly maps. But keep that in mind because you don't want to keep having another signal that is an explicit priority signal to express something that you could express using ordering in quick. Yeah, yeah I think that be So far, but. So. So uh, just, just before you guys go ahead with that, this one. So, chairs, do do you have the what to do tomorrow? Then I'll ask some. I'll request uh, whatever we do. I have some requests from okay. my point of so, view. So like I'm I'm still not clear about if there's someone like how many proposals are gonna come forward for inside the track. So now now we have between the track and inside the track. Between in the track, track, I think, is pretty locked yeah. on what is going to happen for tomorrow. Yeah. I, I'm not clear if like they're gonna come up with something and we're gonna shoot at it, or if like you guys are gonna produce something and you're gonna produce something and you're gonna produce something. Okay. 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 So we will see see between one and four proposals for inside the track, depending on the outcome of this conversation. And so, if if you hate what the other people, are, you guys talk. If you guys hate what the others are doing, you better come with some slides tomorrow, or you're going to lose. Okay. Does that does that work? All right, so I, I'm, we're gonna budget. So Al, Al, Al and I are gonna budget some time to like discuss inside the track proposals, and then we're. I, I think first we'll talk about between the tracks, and like that'll be, um, hopefully a, a more like just taping effort rather than like fundamental disagreement, and then then we can have fundamental disagreements about inside the track. Okay. Between tracks, that'll still that's feel really that's cool. a win. It feels like we're close. To yeah. That. So, okay. So, so ahead, I, I think I guess I think, you have the last word. Yeah, uh, I have some requests. So today, what I heard, like there is some confusion about namespace um, between namespace one namespace multiple namespace. I have other, another kind of confusion I have right now is like how do you express your priority information because I have something talking about like header information, the on track object, whatnot. So whatever you are presenting tomorrow, please be clear on like. What are the terminology you're using and how to interpret those? Because otherwise, I don't think we're going to have a fruitful discussion tomorrow. Make sense? OK. Thank you. Thank you to Colin and Will for for um, taking the notes today. Uh, please take a look at them and verify that they've captured your the, the brilliance of your comments. Okay. I, I was, what? Mike check this morning. I think Colin and Will in the afternoon. Oh. oh. Yeah, OK. Um, so tomorrow, again, we're meeting at Cisco, so don't show up here. Um, anytime between nine and nine thirty, I think I owe you a Google Meet link, which I will send. Um, yeah, I would like to. I, I may have to do a school drop, a camp drop off tomorrow. Um, so we will. I'll do what I can. But street parking should be free, so maybe I'll just drive directly from there rather than like go home and take a bus. Um. Anyway, these, these are details that nobody needs to care about for me. I will do the best I can, but like I'm not even sure. Like nine o'clock is probably gonna be a stretch for me. Um okay. but nine, but hopefully well before nine thirty. All right, great. Um does it this is an after dinner. Does anyone have any logistical questions? Uh, who do you think is coming to dinner? Do we wanna coming to dinner? 
Remember, you have to pay for yourself. I think it's 14. <laughs> so everybody but Christian in the room? And, and, 545. Uh, Luke wants to, everyone else can come at six. Luke wants to bring a guest. Luke, Luke wants to bring a guest. Uh, is, are they compatible with MOQ discussion? Yeah. Are they good? what? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Excellent. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, it's there. Yeah. It's, it's here. We will see you at dinner. Um, so we're here. And and we're done. I'm going to stop recording. Go like this. Sure. What's